everybody and welcome that was beautiful timing on the hydrate that was great timing thank you <laughs> welcome to the last twofold tuesday i think it's going to be the last twofold tuesday which is so strange i've gotten so used to twofold tuesdays now that the thought of like not having it every week to look forward to is so strange <laughs> This has become like a, a proper routine for me, like every week just looking forward to Twofold Tuesday. But uh, I have to say, today doesn't really feel like a Tuesday to me. I don't know what it is. No, I do know what it is. It's because I didn't stream on Sunday. <laughs> and because I didn't stream on Sunday and I went to VTuber Expo instead, that was really good. I'll talk about that at some point. It's going to be, I like, I've, I've got so much to talk about with that. It was great. But uh, yeah, I think because I didn't stream on Sunday, uh, Monday kind of felt like a weekend day to me because I, I also was not doing anything on Monday except like hanging out with friends. So now it feels more like a Monday than a Tuesday to me. <laughs> but it's not, it's Twofold Tuesday. At, at least I have this game to remind me of which day of the week it is. But uh, I'm, I'm both excited and sad to be like this close to fully completing it like I've, i'm really excited to complete it because it's so good but i also don't want it to end <laughs> it's the same thing with like so many amazing games i play i always have so much fun playing them and then it gets close to the end and it's like well i don't want it to end because then it means i won't keep playing this I guess that's one good thing I have about uh, Outer Wilds. Like, the fact that I don't have all of the achievements yet in Outer Wilds means I've given myself a solid excuse to revisit it whenever I feel like. But then things like Talos 2, I got all the achievements in that. Like, I've, I've, I have completed that game to the point where, like, the only things I'm missing are, like, a few Easter eggs, maybe, which wouldn't be, like, a full stream's worth of content. So that one is pretty much done, and it's hard because I love that game. But yeah, I'm, I've, I've had so much fun with this. I've, I've loved the Twofold Tuesday so much. I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I decided to make it a weekly thing. Because <laughs> there's still some games I have that are ongoing that I uh, need to get back to, but I haven't been regularly doing it every week, so I forget. Uh, looking, looking at a 428 Shibuya Scramble, which I haven't played in a, a very, very long time. I'm going to have to do a recap stream for that game story before I continue it because it's been so long. But yeah, wow. Oh, Loxley, thank you. Thank you so much for the resub, the 28 months and then the two year consistently. That's so wild. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Hold on. I want to say hi to everybody. I, I already started rambling. I haven't even said hi to everyone who's here yet. But a welcome, Bob! Congratulations on the first! Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the, the pre-stream head pat as well. And also, uh, I would like to know what you're trying today. What are you trying today? <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, Lynn the Weeb, hello! Lovely to see you here. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for stopping in and for following. And I hope you had fun at Vexpo as well. I, it was it was such a wild weekend. I I only went for the one day. And all of the people I met and the atmosphere and the environment there made me wish I'd gone for the whole weekend. Like it was, it was one of the comfiest conventions I've ever been to. I've been to quite a few different conventions, usually anime ones. Been to quite a few anime conventions in my time. I've been to like London MCM Comic Con, things like that. But Vexpo had just like the, the nicest like vibe going in like it felt comfy i i wish there'd been more to do but i think that's purely because of the fact that it was like the first year of it running and i think some things were quite last minute as well because like i i remember hearing about it at the start of the year and i was like well this has been announced but they've, they've got like no guests or anything and then all of the guests dropped all at once and it was like a completely stacked lineup but it was like oh if i'd if I'd known about this a bit sooner, maybe I would have made plans for the whole weekend. But thankfully, because I live close enough, like I am from the Midlands, because I live close enough that I could like feasibly make it a day trip, I was like, well, I'll, I'll just roll along for the one day. I'll just head along for the Sunday because it will probably be the quietest day and I'm a big baby. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it was nice. I'm really glad I did decide to go. Because uh, I ended up going on my own, which I was very nervous about because because <laughs> I didn't make plans in enough time. But uh, I met up with Maru, Maru Malantra, which uh, I've been friends with her for so long, like through VTubing. So it was really nice to get to meet her for the first time. It was, it was so much fun. And so I was hanging out with her for a while. And then uh, Wonder Riku said that he was heading along. And um, I've... I've, I've mentioned this on stream before as well, but uh, I've I've been friends with him for an unspecified long amount of time. That is um, longer than people may think, because I'm older than people may think. But uh, but I've I've known him since we were teenagers. Like we've been like, it feels I I don't know. It feels a bit wrong to say childhood friends because it was like teenage years. But I feel no that I think that counts as childhood friends. Like thirteen, fifteen is like that that's childhood friends, right? I think it counts. But uh, I met up with him at around lunchtime and then we just spent the rest of the day together. <laughs> it was really nice. It was just like, oh my goodness, you're here. Yes. Let us let us go around together. But yeah, it was it was really nice though. It was also the first time I've caught the train since uh, COVID happened. <laughs> so it's the first time I've actually like taken the train anywhere in four years so i was a little bit nervous going just because like it's been so long and i've been such a little hermit for so long i was like what if what if i can't do this what if this is too much but it was great it was good it was worth it <laughs> but yeah i i will talk more about that probably afterwards because uh, I definitely want to make sure I have time to actually go through everything in twofold. Because knowing me, I'll end up like rambling for two hours at the start and then not have time to do everything I want to do in the game. Because <laughs> I've my pacing is questionable in visual novels. My pacing is slow, and that's fine, except for when I actually want to do stuff. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, it was it was really nice though. I'm really glad I went, and uh, I also went along with a huge bag of um, worm on a string, and I was just handing them out to people I met. I was just like, hey, how's it going? Do you want a worm on a string? <laughs> Go up to a stand, be like, oh my goodness, I follow you on Twitter. Can I buy some stickers from you? Also, would you like a worm on a string? <laughs> it was the best, and I actually um, there was a little table with a they had like this big board where people could leave messages with little post-it notes and stuff and they had a little table in front of it and i'd noticed that people were leaving out business cards and stuff so i left a few of my business cards on there with some worm on a string and a little note saying give a worm a home <laughs> and i went back at the end of the day and they'd actually all gone people actually gave homes to the the worms on strings so i was i was very happy about that I was kind of worried that people would like look at it and be like, well, I, I don't feel like I'm allowed to take this. But no, they all got good homes. At least I presume they're good homes. I, I hope they're good homes. <laughs> Treat the worms well. They are good. But yeah, it was, it was great. I also just realized I said I was going to greet everybody and I got through two people. <laughs> and then got distracted again. The tangents, they continue forever. Jedi Jew, hello. Thank you for stopping in. I fully understand the lurking for spoilers. But uh, thank you for thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a good day. And Suzume, hello. I I also don't want Twofold Tuesdays to end, but I do want to I want to experience all of the content. So it's like I they we we just need threefold. That's what I'm getting from this is that we just need another game after this. Like <laughs> That's all. No, nothing big or anything. Just like an entire new game, please. Thank you. Uh, also, if my voice sounds a little bit, uh, a little bit off today, um, I did get a bit of a sore throat from the weekend. But thankfully, it's not like illness. I didn't get COVID. I I, I saw a couple of people got COVID, and I was like, I'm so sorry. I hope you're okay. But uh, I don't have COVID. And I don't feel ill or anything. I think for me, it was, as funny as this sounds, um, the outside air. <laughs> the outside air kind of like made my throat feel a bit rough. And so I've been like dealing with that for a little bit. 
I think it's mostly just like the air in Birmingham, to be honest. Like it's it's Birmingham. <laughs> I'm not used to being in the city. It's been so so long since I was in a city. So the city air does not suit me. Like where I live, we're like right at the edge of the countryside. So the air here is pretty clear most of the time. So like the the city air, like I could feel it in my throat. Like you know like when you're just breathing the air and it feels kind of rough and you just feel like you need to cough all the time it's like that kind of thing so my throat does still feel a little bit rough and sometimes i feel like i'm i'll say something and it's like a little bit gra gravelly like that kind of <laughs> that kind of tinge to it but i'm i'm feeling okay though i am feeling so much better than i expected to after like spending the whole day out but yeah, it's it, it was a good time. It was worth it. And ba 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 ba. Let me check in chat. Yes, Loxley, thank you so much for the resub. I hope I do get to meet you next time. I, it was so sad because I, like me and Loxley were messaging each other about like meeting up at Vexmo, but he left on the Saturday evening and I arrived on the Sunday morning. <laughs> so, so we just missed each other, which was a shame. But next time, next time, I believe. And Loen, hello, welcome, welcome. Yeah, I was, I was very proud of myself. Proud of myself for like, one, leaving the house, two, leaving the house on my own, three, getting the train into Birmingham on my own, four, being in Birmingham on my own. <laughs> but it was so funny because it's, it's it's it has been like four years since I went to Birmingham because I just don't go into the city like I've completely gotten out of the habit of it I used to go to Birmingham all the time and now it's like this is the first time in four years and so much of it has changed but so much of it also hasn't so it was like a really weird kind of semi deja vu like I was like I'm remembering this place but it wasn't quite like this like just that tiny bit of like almost like an uncanny valley kind of feeling like my memory was mistaken but i still recognized it it, it was very weird <laughs> but a good time it was fun <laughs> three false sounds like moving into yuri polyamory <laughs> i mean poly relationships could be could be a thing and also, Akira, thank you for the glasses, too. I, I love the thought of me just, like, rambling on about something and you just gently come along and plop my glasses on my face. Just, you forgot these. Here you go. <laughs> thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. And thank you for the lurk as well, Lynn. I hope you have a good lurk and a good rest of your day. And Gambler, too. Hi. Thank you for the lurk. Thank you for stopping in. I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a good Tuesday. Ah. Uh, Oh, Loxley, you went to uni in Birmingham. There's always a weird nostalgia when you pass through. Oh, this weekend was the first time at the NEC, though. Oh, the first time I went to the NEC... I'm trying to... I'm trying to think. I, I went once when I was younger. But the first time, like, I went on my own was... There's an anime convention called Kitacon. And Kitacon used to be held for a while at the Hilton in Birmingham, which is very close to the NEC and you basically walk through the NEC to get there and that was like the first time I got to know like the layout of the NEC and then I went to like uh they ended up doing a Birmingham MCM comic con like uh, Midlands Expo it wasn't Midlands Expo that's like Telford they did like a Birmingham Expo and I went there and that was also at the NEC so I've been a couple of times but it was that was the first time I went on my own like, usually I'd meet up with friends at the train station and we walk in together. I was going down those long hallways on my own and it was- it felt weird. <laughs> also, Barb, what are you trying? Are you trying Monster Ultraviolet? Is that what you're trying? Wait. Wait, if you've not tried that and you're trying that today, please let me know what it's like. And also, thank you for reminding me of the Hydrate Redeem as well from like 15 minutes ago. I'll do that now. <laughs> I, 
I'm a clever person. I don't get distracted. I'm always fully focused on what I'm doing, and I never forget things. <laughs> Please forgive me. It's been like a whole four days since I streamed. I've forgotten how to do this. <laughs> but cheers. Cheers for the monster. It is a very weird space. Yeah, I feel like the NEC is... It feels bigger than it is. Like, there are just so many hallways. There are so many hallways. Like, there's one hallway that is so long they literally put conveyor belts on it for you to stand on and go along and also one of those broke on the way back so that was that was a good one <laughs> but I think I did more walking on Sunday than I have in the past month combined <laughs> was, my legs are so so sore I did so much walking but it's it's good for me I'm proud of myself and my legs didn't start hurting until after I got home so that was good <laughs> But oh, it's refreshing! Yes! I'm I'm glad I'm I'm glad you like it. I'm glad it's nice. <laughs> but yeah, oh Brindley as well! Happy Twofold Tuesday! Welcome, welcome! But uh yes, uh for anyone who doesn't know, I'm part of the Studio Elan Stream Ambassador program. I'm a bellflower. <laughs> We've got some we're in the process of like planning stuff for the bellflowers, but uh, it's been a very busy time of year. So things haven't been able to be like fully organized yet, especially because of the fact that um, we're all in different time zones as well. Like we have the full run of time zones amongst the, the current bellflowers, which is really nice for like the spread of like when we stream and stuff. But it does make it a little awkward for organizing collabs when it's like, okay, um, are you free at 4 a.m.? And then two of us aren't. And then it's like, okay, would you be free at like 9 a.m. your time? And it's like, yeah, I would be. But then it's like 3 a.m. for other people. And it's so impossible to organize. <laughs> but I believe in us. One day we'll, we'll have like the, the full group collab. Either way, even if not that, we can probably arrange like part collabs. Like just a few of us. Like the people in like similar time zones grouped together it would be nice but yeah <laughs> you only learnt it on saturday yeah it was so nice because um Loxley saw the there was like a studio elan advert at vexpo and he immediately messaged me about it and said have you heard of this <laughs> which is like the, that was like the nicest thing it's like the fact that you thought of me when you saw that like that's that's what I want. That's like the reputation I want. But yeah, I was I was actually one of the first people asked, and I instantly replied with yes to to join the the ambassador program. And it's so fun. It also means that if you go to the Studio Elan web store and buy things, including twofold merch, I'm pretty sure you can use the code Liri and get a discount. <laughs> but yeah, really good merch. Really good. Really good games, really good companies, just nice time all around. Also, I'm not entirely sure, but I think as well, because my own merch is on the Studio Elan web store, like in the Verpro section, I think the discount applies for my own merch as well. <laughs> so it's like a little cheeky, the code is there. Yeah, just need more bellflowers for every time zone. Yeah, we, we just need... We need these flowers to bloom. We need like a whole flower field that just spreads across all of the time zones. I think that's the idea. I think it's really nice. We've, we've planted the first few flowers. We're some of the first few flowers, but it's, it's going to bloom more. It's going to grow. And I'm excited for that. <laughs> yeah, are oh, quite busy lately to just play games. Yeah, I've seen you've been doing a lot of like the, the 3D modeling and art and stuff, which is cool. But yeah, I'm, I've been really busy too, but with like not fun stuff. But uh, the not fun stuff has mostly stopped happening now. So I think I'm going to have more free time like for the rest of the year to do more fun projects, which I'm very excited for. I have a few things cooking up. <laughs> but yes, either way, I think I should get on with uh, playing the game. 
because basically what I've done so far is I've managed, um, I've done both of the routes. I've done all of the friendship options on Millie's route for the writing club. And I've done Allison's friendship route for Caprice's art club. But I haven't done um, Eileen and Wallace yet. So that is the plan to start with. We're going to do the friendship routes for Eileen and Wallace. I might put a poll up to see which order we do them in. And then after that, there is also Perfect Circle, which unlocked after completing both of the paths. And I haven't done that yet, so I don't know what to expect from this. All I know is that it's a pre prequel, I think. I think it's a prequel because I remember someone saying perfect circle is zero, first snow is one, twofold is two. That's that's all I know about it. I've purposely gone out of my way to like not look up anything about it because uh, Caps told me that was the best way to, to go into it. And I was like, I trust you. I trust you with my life. <laughs> so yeah, the plan is gonna be to do all the friendship routes, get all of that completed and then complete perfect circle. And then after that as well, I've been told that the standalone version of Perfect Circle does have some extra scenes as well. So I've got that downloaded as well, but I'm, I'm gonna play Perfect Circle through this because, because I want all the Steam achievements. <laughs> but uh, I think all of the scenes in Perfect Circle, from what I've heard, they're just unlocked immediately in the standalone anyway. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens but I'm very excited to experience more. Also, can I just say like the new menu and the music since doing the roots, this is so lovely. It's so nice, I love it. But yes, time to find the save file. I love that this is just a page called Ow. <laughs> Yeah, here it is. Here, I made a save file right as the the options were made available. So this is the save we're using. Bam, 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 bam. But yeah, oh, I really like the music. Yeah, all of the music in this is so good. The whole soundtrack's amazing. Makes me feel very happy that I have the soundtracks. <laughs> oh, you're not ready to cry at work again, 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 one more time again. It's okay, the, um, the weekly allergies. <laughs> also, Bob, that is completely fine too. Yeah, if, if you want to go into the game, I would recommend lurking, like if you want to play it yourself, because I wouldn't want to like spoil the main plot aspects for you if you want to check it out, because it's so good. It's, it's really worth playing. It's really good, but uh, it, it does get emotional. It's, it's one of the things I love so much about it. Like it, it feels kind of funny to be like, I love this because it makes me cry, but, <laughs> but it's, there's something so cathartic about it. Like the, it's, it's good. It's, it's a healing game. I love it. But yes, free study her. Huh? Right. Are we going to try painting like Eileen or are we going to draw with Wallace? Hold on, let me let me start with a poll. Let's make a poll for this. If I can remember where the polls are. Here they are. New poll. Hoomst. Are we going Eileen or are we going Wallace? Okay. The poll has started. <laughs> Let's see which one we end up doing first. Okay, vote for Wallace to begin with. It'd be so funny if there's just one vote. <laughs> A single vote, like the single Wallace fan, you get what you want. <laughs> okay, no, it's tied. There we go. That's more like it. That's what I expect from polls. Okay, one random question though. Which monster cans do I want? <gasps> oh, mmm. 
Well, at the moment, I've got Fiesta and I've got quite a few Rosa still. I'd say the peachy, peachy keen. It's been a while since I had the peach ones. I bought like a single can the other day, but I haven't had like a, a, a box of them in a while. Yeah, of course it's, of course it's still even. Of course the poll is tied. What, what did I expect? <laughs> also, brisket, hello, good morning. Happy Twofold Tuesday. Welcome, welcome. <gasps> Didn't me. Oh, oh, I know what you mean. Well, yeah, you've got them then. You've got them. That's fine. That's all you need. That's that's all you need. <laughs> you have got them. Thank you. I suddenly now realize. Oh, Eileen is uh, pulling her head now. I'm I'm sorry for that one really avid Wallace fan who voted right at the start. <laughs> Is it going to tie again at the last second? We shall see. It's tied again. Of course it is. It's okay. I have... I have dice. Yep. Oh my goodness. Wait, there were like last minute votes for both of them. Two sneaky last minute votes and they managed to like retie it. That's... <laughs> That's incredible. That's so good. It has to be the tie, doesn't it? Of course it is. What did I expect? <laughs> anyway, it's okay. So I've got a d6, a d10, and a d20. Which one should I roll? I haven't rolled a d10 in a while. Let's do that one. Let's go for d10. Ah, uh, if I want any more, let you know. Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, that, but that is more than enough that is that is perfect thank you <laughs> uh democracy doesn't work we've learned this time and time again yeah it's 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 fine i i expect the polls to tie now it's just like a nice surprise when there is a winner <laughs> anyway i'm gonna roll a d10 um if it's odds then it's eileen if it's even then it's wallace oh. <laughs> i dropped it on the floor hold on Oh no, where's it gone? I've lost it. Oh, there it is. I found it. I found it. I dropped my D10, yeah. <laughs> like I rolled it on my desk and then it rolled off my desk into my lap and then rolled off my lap onto the floor. So that was, that was good. Right, let's try that again. Odds for Eileen, evens for Wallace. That is a seven. Oh, it's Eileen. We're going to start with Eileen. <laughs> Wait, women. Yes. I do love women. It's very true. Yeah, even even the die didn't want to decide for me. The die was like, wouldn't it be really funny if I just don't give you a result? <laughs> Because, like, it landed on the carpet, too, and it wasn't, like, on a number. So the die was also like, wouldn't it be really funny for more of a die? <laughs> but, yeah, I guess we're going to start with Eileen then, and then Wallace is going to be the, the last route. So that will be interesting to see how it goes. Because the, the connection with these is really interesting. Because Alison's side, we've got... Um, Alison was just a sweetheart trying to, like, make things work with Olive and Caprice. Eileen is linked to the painting business. And Wallace is really good friends with Millie and used to be in the writing club. So so the connections between all of them are really interesting. And I am so curious as to what the scenes are going to be like. But yes. Oh, you're gonna look. Oh, that's completely fine, Bob. I hope you have a good look. And I will message you about us collabing again very soon as well, because I'm 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 finally sorting out all the collabs and stuff. The first one is happening on Wednesday. It's been way, way overdue. But they're happening. They're happening. I'm I'm making them happen now. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for the luck. I hope everything goes well for you. Hee <laughs> hee. We love women. I love women. Women are my favorite men. 
What what are the other lyrics? All of the dream. How does it mean? But yeah, I, th I think Wednesday is going to be incredibly chaotic and I'm looking forward to it. Also, Gigi, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome in. You're just in time. We're about to uh, try painting like Eileen. Except it's not going to be like Eileen because Eileen is incredible and a magnificent artist. And Olive... Olive is trying their best and I love them for it. But they're not an expert yet. <laughs> oh, Caps, hello! I woke up like three seconds ago, but you made it. You did. And you haven't missed anything too because I was rambling about um, VTuber Expo for half an hour. So you have joined right as the poll tied between Eileen and Wallace. And then I dropped my die on the floor and it landed on its side and also did not pick a number. So we've had two ties on which which one to do first. But finally, we've decided on Eileen. <laughs> right, let's check this out. <laughs> Eileen just makes you think of the song. Honestly, um, I, I always used to think about, like, come on, Eileen, as well, every time I see the name. But then I, I named my halfling cleric Eileen Berrybottom in Baldur's Gate 3. So now every time I see Eileen, I'm torn between, like, a hot blonde woman and a tiny old lady. Like, those are the two images I get in my mind with the name Eileen. And they are, like, so different from each other, and it's the funniest thing. <laughs> Right, anyway, we're going to try painting like Eileen. Because painting is straightforward, at least. Something about paint feels especially artsy compared to the other choices here. It looks so professional and out of reach for a person like me. Uh, what about an older, attractive blonde lady? That's that's what I said, like a, a really hot, tall blonde woman. That's, that's this Eileen. <laughs> Either this Eileen or like the Eileen who was my playable character in Baldur's Gate 3, who was just a very sweet old lady who wanted to uh, show people the, the, the true and righteous path. <laughs> oh, oh, they're so different, but great. Good times. But yeah, something about paint feels especially artsy compared to the other choices here. It looks so professional and out of reach for a person like me. Or maybe Eileen specifically gives me that vibe. Either way, I said I'd give the club an honest try. There's nothing more serious than painting on an easel to show I mean it. That is true. The paints I grab are a mismatch of different brands of paint and colours. There's a surprising amount of blue and green options and almost nothing else. Limitations breed innovation or something like that. Here goes nothing. What on earth do you think you're doing? Painting? I nearly jump out of my skin. I lean over my shoulder, glaring down both at me and the easel. <gasps> Did you have to sneak up on me? <laughs> Be happy I didn't assassinate you. You're ruining that canvas and those brushes. Oh, I can just imagine them like being really rough with the brushes not knowing you have to have to let them glide you have to let them flow with the with, with the paints oh you like Eileen I, I love Eileen I've, I've loved her ever since I played first snow I was just like this is she is she's <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's Eileen anyway <laughs> I look at my painting, a swirl of blue with a splotch of dark green in the middle. I was envisioning something like a cactus on a windowsill, but so far it's just a runny mess. None of the colours are really sticking to the canvas as well as I'd hoped, running down and spilling onto the wooden base. Look, I know I'm not any good at this, but I'm not trying to be bad. Give me a bit of a break. Yeah, they're trying. <laughs> they're trying their best. 
I also wouldn't know where to start with like canvas painting though. I, I would not have a clue what to do. I would probably also make a big mess. Oh my goodness, Maya, hi! I'm gonna wait for the text-to-speech to hopefully work. Hopefully. Hello, bot. You gonna be a, a good bot? You gonna be a good bot? Say the words. No? No, you're not? Okay, okay, bots, bots on strike, that's fine. She's allowed a break from time to time. But uh, thank you so much for the resub for 20 months. Oh my goodness. And you've made it to the final Two Fold Tuesday and it's the, the 20 month sub anniversary. Yeah, that's that's so great. Look at all the twos. Yeah, text to speech is just like, I'm, I'm not talking today. What are you on about? It'll probably start speaking like five minutes in the future. Like uh, when I'm not expecting it, it'll just start reading the message. <laughs> But thank you so much for the resub, welcome! And Gregor as well, welcome! How's it going? Welcome on in, welcome to the final Twofold Tuesday. Mind you, I do say that, I say it's the final Twofold Tuesday. If I keep going at this pace, we may get another three streams out of this, honestly. <laughs> I am taking my time, it's okay. It's okay, we'll get there eventually. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And I'm I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying the journey. <laughs> okay, the dude's working. I guess it's just the text-to-speech then. Hold on, I wanna try test this. Why are you not working? It should work. Test. Okay, yeah, the test message isn't playing either. The sounds all work. The sound alerts are fine. Eight. Yeah, the sound alerts are fine. It's just the text-to-speech. Uh-oh. Oh, well. Yeah, d just all of the text-to-speech in general just doesn't want to work at the moment, so uh, that's okay. Let me just turn off the text-to-speech command because that's, that's not going to work either. Let me just remove that. <laughs> Yeah, just use that if you want to express anything. <laughs> you don't even need text-to-speech, just screams. Where is it? There we go. Turned off the text-to-speech redeem, so nobody loses their points. <laughs> but yeah, sorry about that. I don't know why that's not working. But uh, thank you so much for the resub. I hope you're doing well. Glad you could make it for the final, final probably, Twofold Tuesday. And uh, I've I've literally only just started actually playing the game after talking for a while, but uh, we've we're starting with Eileen, and then the last friendship route is going to be Wallace. So I'm really interesting to interesting, interested. I'm I mean I think I am interesting, but <laughs> I'm really interested to know what this is going to be like, and what direction it goes in because. Knowing what Eileen is doing, it's going to be really interesting having that perspective going into this. And let you destroy Caprice's supplies because she's too naive and trusting of a total newbie? <sighs> Gimme that. Yeah, let her help you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Eileen takes the palette from my hands and places it on a nearby table. In a surprisingly quick turnaround, she thrusts a new set of paints into my arms and stands there expectantly. What am I supposed to do with this? Paint. Paint. Yeah. What's the difference? She scowls and shakes her head in total disbelief. Why would you join an art class when you can't even tell the difference between acrylic and watercolor? Ah. That would explain why the paints weren't working properly. Oh. Oh, Olive. <laughs> They're trying. Watercolor usually comes in those plastic containers. Things to not say to an artist. 
the cheap kinds, yes? Unless you mean gouache, which we both know you nor Caprice can afford. Yeah. I have no idea what gouache is. Read what you're using next time. Using a water-based paint on a gessoed canvas is ridiculous. A what canvas? <laughs> no clue what gesso is either. I guess so we're gonna find out, maybe. Sorry. 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 I'm also sorry. <laughs> oh, she's catty. Oh yeah, I Eileen is like, she is full no business. No business? No. Uh, no, no. F That's not what I want to say. What am I on about? I don't know what's up with me today. I feel like my brain has just fallen out of my ears and I'm forgetting how to say things. No nonsense. That's the one. No nonsense. She is all business. She is... She's very fierce and, um, stubborn. And she... Is very firm and also probably a little bit tsundere. <laughs> oh, Akure! Thank you for the dictionary narration redeem, Wait, yeah, let me Let me practice my reading and English language skills before we continue. <laughs> Thank you for the dictionary narration redeem. We've got the letter A and the word we have is... Oh, okay. Uh, the word is ads. It's, I, I think, just ads. A-D-Z-E. Apparently in the US it doesn't have the E on the end. But apparently an adds is a tool similar to an axe with an arched blade. I did not know that. That's pretty cool. Oh, uh, guess so is a, a primer for a canvas. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's, I kind of presumed as much from the fact that she said it was a guessoed canvas. Like, it's, it's obviously something done to the canvas. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know any of the details on, like, painting at all. Thank you for the hydrate as well. We have a sip of monster. Wait, you're from the US, does it not? Well, it's just what my dictionary says. Dictionary could be lying. It's very possible. But uh, it specifically said uh, ADZE for the dictionary and then in brackets said US ADZ or ADZ, I guess. <laughs> So I, I don't know if it's just like a either or, like you can use both, like it's interchangeable. It's very possible. But yeah, I've, I've never heard of that before. Muriel one Sandra. Not even heard of it. Oh my goodness, Ace, thank you for the resub for nine months. Welcome. And Timochi too, Meowdy. Welcome on in. Okay, that one got the text-to-speech. I don't know why the text-to-speech didn't work before. <laughs> She's finally off strike. There we go. Maybe it was too long and she was just like, I'm not reading all that. <laughs> but uh, welcome, welcome. Welcome, Ace. It was so cool meeting you at the weekend. The the, the first person to recognize me at VTuber Expo. The, uh, the coveted role. Before I even went into the convention hall, it was great. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for the resub. Welcome. Happy Twofold Tuesday. I am so glad you recognized me immediately. That was the whole reason why I wanted to cosplay as myself. Because then I was like, well, if anyone is unsure of this, if it's me, I will just make sure that they are not unsure. Like, I will make it the most sure thing. Like, I had the little beret, I had my top, I had my skirt on, I had my tail, my ears. I read it, re it turned out really well. It was really nice. It was a really good time. You had to go retrieve Alex and noticed a pink cat girl. Bag of worms. Yeah, just everything that creates a Leary. It was me. I was there. <laughs> but yeah, I, I found it so funny how, like, I heard my name called before I even stepped into the expo hall. Like, it was the very entrance. I'd just, like, put my wristband on and I heard Leary. It turned around. It was, it was great. And then we got into in trouble for like chatting in front of the the entrance to the hall, and we had to move to the side. <laughs> it was good though. Leave a trail of worms on strings. I will find you. No, I was the one leaving the strings. 
It was just like, see people around, just be like, hey, you want a worm? There you go. There you go. Yeah, I think there were two types of VTuber. Yeah, like me and Dandy Floss cosplayed as ourselves and then Cap Hurricane and you just wore t-shirts with a hedgehog and a goat respectively. That's great. I love that. You want to meet me? Well, hopefully, hopefully at some point in the future. 2025, look out for it. I'm, I'm hoping for more convention opportunities next year. I'm hoping I will get the chance to attend more conventions. But we'll we'll have to see how things go because I'm I'm a broke baby. I I got no money. <laughs> but I'm making plans. I'm trying to work things out. But yeah, I used to go to cons all the time. But yeah, that was my first convention in a very very long time, and it was very worth it. It was a lot of fun. I'm excited for next year. But yeah, turned around to see a lamppost. Yeah, Ace, you're so tall. <laughs> You're really tall. I also had like the funniest moment of like, you said hi to me and I was like, oh no, I recognize your voice. Oh no, wait, who are you? <laughs> and then you said your name and it clicked and I was like, oh, of course. <laughs> it was good though. It was a lot of fun. I wish I'd gone for the whole weekend. Next time. Yeah, I recognized your voice from like the, the VR chat times. <laughs> And like, I, you, you spoke to me and I, I couldn't place it. And I was just like, no, this is so familiar, but whomst? <laughs> oh, last one you went to was London Anime Con like eight years ago or something. Yeah, I think the last one I went to was, would have been like five years ago, maybe. It was one of the, um, one of the MCM Expos. And that was actually at the NEC as well. It was good. <laughs> Didn't expect me to to recognize you at all. I, of course, I would. Like the the British solidarity. <laughs> it was good though. Anyway, uh, back to um, Eileen being admonished. Uh, no, Olive being admonished by Eileen. I really have just forgotten how to speak at the moment. I think I'm just. What are words? Who needs them? I need more monster. I have to say too as well, it, it has gotten really warm here again recently. <laughs> we had like a brief respite from the heat. It managed to cool down for a little bit. And now the heat is like right back up again. And like it is 28 degrees Celsius in my bedroom at the moment. And like I've got my fan on. It's very nice having my fan. I'm actually going to turn it so it's pointing at me a little bit more. Okay, I've got the fan on me now. Oh, that's better. That's immediately better. There we go. <laughs> I love that I have a fan with a remote control now. I can just press the buttons and control it like that. It's so nice. Gone are the days where I had to manually press a button and get up off my seat or get out of bed. Now I have a controller for it. It's great. <laughs> But yeah, I was also very smart at the weekend because um, I decided to cosplay as my comfy outfit. And anyone who knows my comfy outfit will know it has long sleeves. And that was maybe not the smartest decision for a, a, like a, a convention expo hall. But I, I survived surprisingly well though. I think it did help that there was definitely air conditioning there. Like I could tell that I wasn't overheating. Even though there were like quite a few people around, it did get quite warm. It wasn't like unbearably hot, but it was good. Oh, I cosplayed. I did. I cosplayed as myself. It was good times, but yeah, the, like it was really well ventilated. It was so well ventilated. It was really good. And um, it's something that I always hear like horror stories about at other conventions where everything is like super warm, super stifled. Everyone's all jammed in together. Vexpo was really nice in that regard because they made sure there was enough space between things that you could have like multiple rows of people walking without like blocking people off. Like they, they left space in the hallways and it made it so much easier to move around. It was really nice. 
but yeah, sadly, uh, I, I did get an AC unit at some point, but logistically, it does not work in my house. We have stupid windows, and I can't vent the air out, so... <laughs> so I don't have AC. I just got a fan. But I did get a really nice big fan. <laughs> I, got, I got myself a fan upgrade when I was, like, upset about the AC not working. Even though I still don't have the refund through for that because the, everything has been awful with that, but hopefully soon. <laughs> but yeah, I, I cosplayed as myself at the weekend. It was good. Also, Brushy, hello! Welcome, welcome! How's it going? Welcome in! Wait, before I continue with the game, I, I know I, I keep, like, getting distracted and talking about other things. Very, very quickly before we continue, I want to share just one image from Vexpo. Because it's like one of my favorite photos that was taken of the weekend. And you'll be able to see my cosplay too, but just like a little bit. But uh, this here is one of my favorite photos from the weekend. <laughs> there it is! There were two really like fully decked out cars there. There was an Eno one here, and there was also a Zentrea one from V Shoujo, which is like behind me here. But yeah, this is my cosplay. Like half of it. <laughs> I cosplayed as me. And it was great because it meant like people who knew me would recognize me. And then this is me with uh, Wonder Riku, who is a composer songwriter who has done many things for many people. Worked with a lot of cool VTubers, does like J-pop stuff as well. And we're also a childhood... I'm going to say childhood friends. It's close enough. I think it counts as childhood friends. But yeah, we, we've been friends for ages. And I don't know how we both ended up like in the VTuber spheres. In like different sides of it. But it's really cool how it happened. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I just really like that photo. Because it, it shows off the cosplay pretty well. And also you can't see my face. It's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I also talked to the guy who owned the car. It was great. I gave him a sticker and a business card. But yeah, everyone there was so nice. Everyone was really like friendly to talk to. I was worried that I would feel too nervous to talk to anybody, but it was lovely. It was just like a really, really nice environment there. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> wonder when the first Lyrieta show will exist. Um, I, I don't think anyone would want me on a car, considering how notorious I am for um, cr crashing cars. <laughs> Virtual cars. Virtual cars. I've never crashed a real car. But I don't know how to drive. But yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad it, I decided to last minute go along. Anyway, back to the game. I'm, I, will, I will stop getting distracted. I will stop getting distracted. I will probably still get distracted, but I, I've got... <laughs> I must try. I'm gonna have more monster. I need more focus to keep going. <laughs> oh, put me on a demolition derby cart. Wait, yeah, that would work. <laughs> anyway, yes, Olive is getting in trouble for not knowing what paint is. Do you mean it? What? Caprice might put up with your wet cat routine, but I won't. If you're going to be using someone else's space and supplies, do the bare minimum. Yeah, no nonsense. No business. <laughs> no nonsense, all business. I Eileen is so great. She's powerful. I love how powerful she is. Yeah, I've never crashed a real car. No, I can guarantee that I wouldn't set it on fire either. I can I can fully guarantee that. I can guarantee that 100%. <laughs> but oh wait, if I've never crashed a real char a real car, that only means I'd work like a good luck charm. Wait. I like that actually. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've never I've never crashed a car, so you won't crash with my blessing. I like that. I like that. I'm I'm going to steal that for the future. <laughs> Anyway, I also love here how this is, like, Eileen being stern because she doesn't want Caprice to be taken advantage of as well. Like, saying, like, you're just ruining Caprice's supplies and stuff. 
it's very sweet. This is like a very considerate gesture from her, and it, I, I really like that. If there were any doubt about it before, Eileen is definitely insulting me now. Weirdly, though, it doesn't feel particularly mean-spirited. I'll double-check next time. You're right. Yeah. Of course I am. <laughs> if you're not sure of something, ask before just jumping into the deep end. It's more trouble for everyone if you brute force it. True. Oh, there we go. Eileen storms away without another word. In the short time we've been here, she's already created a whole figure and scene on her own canvas. It makes my current attempt look embarrassing in contrast. I sigh and try again, this time with the right materials. The difference in how the paint lays is immediately clear. With renewed energy, or just because I don't want to get yelled at again, I get back to work. Yeah, I've painted with acrylics before, but uh, the only watercolor painting I've ever done was when I was like seven years old and it was one of those like plastic tray kits. <laughs> I do like acrylics though. Oh, look, a sea turtle. Boop. Okay, this is a repeat scene, so now we start to skip. See, I should be using these skip moments as the times to start rambling about Vexpo. <laughs> Instead of pausing in the middle of a conversation and being like, hey, yeah, also all of this stuff. It's all right, I'm, I'm very smart. Oh, is this new scene? Yeah, this is a new scene. Okay. Leaning against the backside of a booth, Mom and I allow ourselves a brief respite after somehow surviving another lunch rush. How does such a tiny little trolley car fit so many people? If you figure it out, let me know. I've been wondering the same thing for over 20 years. Uh... So she says, but with the smile on her face, you'd think she was totally unfazed. I guess you get used to it. Our rest is cut short by the sound of two sets of footsteps approaching from outside, paired with idle chatter from their owners. To my horror, I recognize both of them. As mom props herself up to get ready to greet our new customers, I sink further down, trying my best to hide myself behind her as they step indoors. It's just as cute on the inside. Look at all the photos. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, Capri's friend scenes have the intro and five scenes in their finale segments. Oh, that's great. That's really good to know, thank you. That does help, but I'm, you know what, I'm gonna write that down. I was gonna say that helps a lot, but I'm going to forget because I am so scattered today for some reason. But I have a notebook here, I can just write it. <laughs> but no, that, that really is helpful, thank you. But the pizza scene starts with the same line each time. I will not be tricked, I will be ready. Maybe. I, I may not be ready. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Okay, I've made a note. <laughs> oh, are they coming on a date here? Wait. I hope they are. That would, that would be so cute. You're such a tourist. Look, Eileen with a smile. <laughs> Senior. She's so tough and no no business. I keep wanting to say no business now. <laughs> it's the opposite. She's all business, no nonsense. It's nice seeing her, like, letting her guard down. Oh, I love these two so much. I love them. I love them. I love them so much. I, I feel like like a proud parent when I see them it's both. I didn't mean to scroll back. Inside. Look at all the photos. You just get to see him again. You're such a tourist. There we go. You can see how her demeanor changes when she's with Allison, though. It's so cute. I love it. I love them. Yeah, I feel like a proud parent who's just like, you, you are both doing your best, and I'm so proud of you both. 
can practically hear Alison's eyes opening in awe. I know, it's like when you see the way she says that, compared to like how she's been speaking the rest of the time, you can tell like she lets her guard down with Alison and it's really sweet. It's really nice. Also, Maru, hello! Welcome, welcome, how's it going? Welcome, Maru's one of the people I met at Vexpo. I got to meet her, it was great. We got to meet each other for the first time and also I spent quite a while walking around with her as well. But hi, you're alive, I'm glad to hear it. Got home at around 10 p.m. last night. Oh, I'm glad you made it back. I hope the travel wasn't too rough. I hope you had a fun weekend though. It was, it was really nice getting to meet you, I'm so glad. But I hope you're doing well. I hope you're able to get some good rest now that you're back home. Yeah, super tiring, but worth it. Yeah, that's that's how I felt too. Like I got home and I was like, I am so exhausted, but it was worth it. Also, thank you for the lurk as well, Loxley. Have a good rest of your day too. Thank you for for stopping in and sticking by. Sticking by, what? Stopping by and sticking around. I really am just, <laughs> the, the words coming out of my mouth are all over the place at the moment. I have no idea what is up with me. I'm just gonna blame the convention. <laughs> like I did so much talking to other people at the, the convention at the weekend, I just don't know how to speak anymore. <laughs> oh, thank you for the hydrate. Yes, I, I need more brain juice. More brain juice. And thank you for the posture check as well. Let me have a big stretch. Ah, sit up straight. There we go. And I get the head pad too. Thank you so much, Akiri. But yeah, too much talking at the weekend. Yeah, I, I used up all of the my talking ability. And now I've just forgotten how to speak. It's fine. <laughs> it's like uh, I, I got the chance to meet uh, Kuro from B Shoujo towards the end of the weekend like it was quite late on in the day it was like towards the end of the convention and he was just hanging around like near the entrance area and i got to say hi to him and take a photo with him and he was really lovely he was so nice and i i don't know what i was saying i was saying like some random rambling about like it's always so nice to see a vtuber and then hear their accent and be like oh yeah you're british it feels so familiar i was I was just rambling about british accents and after i walked away i was like why why <laughs> why am i like this he was really nice though it was it's always so nice in situations like that where like, you'd expect, like, the big streamers to be a bit more, like, away from everybody else, like, hiding away and stuff. But he was just wandering around the halls, just saying hi to everybody, just taking photos with everyone. And he was just lovely. He was a lovely guy. <laughs> like, I... Like, I, I, I became, like, a, a, a fan of him through, like, the interactions and stuff. Like, I already knew who he was. Like, I follow him and stuff. But I didn't tend to catch, like, his streams. But now I'm just like, yeah, he was he was great. <laughs> so nice. Like, just having a chat. Just being like, yeah, hi. Hope you've been having fun. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was very nice. Because I was actually a little nervous to talk to him. And I think he noticed. And he was just like, do, do you want to take a photo together? <laughs> Like, I was just, like, standing there awkwardly, like, is it okay to say hi? I'm I'm just such an awkward person in general. I'm really bad at approaching people. So that was really nice. And he had, like, a little Eevee plushie, too, and it was so cute. <laughs> but, yeah, it was it was a really nice convention, though. I, I, I keep getting distracted. Even though it's Eileen time, I keep getting distracted. But uh, I think it did kind of help as well, the fact that we're all VTubers or VTuber fans. Like, we have a lot in common in terms of um, being big nerds. <laughs> I say, with the most love in my heart. <laughs> so it didn't feel as, like, as intimidating in that kind of way. Oh! Same when you, you run into a, a YouTuber who is unexpectedly at TF Nation. Oh, just, 
<laughs> hey, want to take a pic? I always love when when people do that. Like, let other people approach me first. That, that's the whole reason why for the whole convention I was like, I'm going to cosplay as myself. And I'm going to send a message saying, please say hi if you see me. Because I'm a big baby and I won't say hi to people. <laughs> But it worked so well. So many people actually approached me and I was just like, hi, do you want a worm? <laughs> My favorite thing to do. The worms were a great icebreaker, honestly. Like, a pro hack from me, like if you want to introduce yourself to people and um, you're nervous about like getting to know them, just walk up to them with a worm on a string, say, hey, do you want a worm on a string? <laughs> It's, it's such a good way to break the ice. It was really good. Uh, VTubers or VTuber fans? <laughs> Sounds a bit like VTubers are not fans of other VTubers. No, it's more like... I should have said and, yeah. Because I'm a VTuber fan as well. I'm not just a VTuber. But yeah, I, I liked the worms. I'm glad I decided to do that. <laughs> Uh, you went to a meet and greet a while ago. You were so starstruck at the front of the queue. The musician literally pulled you out of line. <laughs> it is, it's so intimidating. Also, Cam, hello. It really is hard. It's so hard. But yes, isn't this game so beautiful? I love the art in this game so much. The art, the music, the writing, the characters. It's a chef's kiss. It's just such a great combination. It's such a great game. I love this game so much feels so weird to think that I'm nearly done with it. Maybe that's why I keep like going off on tangents and rambling. I'm I'm just like subconsciously stretching the game out so I have to do another stream. <laughs> no, I th I think this will be the the last two fold Tuesday. But I'm I'm going to just keep talking about it all the time anyway. It's such a good game. Yeah, just delaying the inevitable. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the lurk as well, Maru. That is completely fine. Yes, uh, I hope I hope you can get some good rest soon. After all of the traveling, cause like, all the way from Scotland too. That's that's a really long journey. Like I was I was so exhausted after my travel, and I took like two short trains. That was all, <laughs> and that was enough for me. Yeah, delaying the inevitable. That's what it is. But yeah, yeah, Ace. Uh, just do you want a worm? What? I just pull out the bag of worms. <laughs> it was so funny because like halfway through the day, I was reaching into my bag and I forgot to like do up the little Ziploc because I put all my worm on strings in a little Ziploc bag so they'd all be together. I kept taking worms out and forgetting to shut the Ziploc bag again. So by the like the middle of the day. There were just loose worms on strings all over my back. Like, I just throw my hand in and pull out a worm. <laughs> like, I couldn't find anything I was actually looking for. Because there were just worms everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm even showing the scenes extra long because it's so beautiful. That is definitely the reason. It's not because I'm getting distracted and talking about other things. It's to give you a chance to look at how beautiful this is. Like, look at this. Also, I'm keeping this on screen so that we get to enjoy Eileen's smile a bit more because she's probably going to be a bit more guarded as soon as she notices Olive's here. <laughs> yeah, my bag of worms. Like, my one regret from Vexpo is that I didn't bring more worms because I ended up handing out the entire bag of worms. I handed out every single worm on a string I had and then I met like four or five people towards the end of the day and I wanted to give them a worm and I'd run out. <laughs> I didn't take enough. So next time I go, I'm going to have like a hundred. <laughs> Everyone's going to get one. I'm, I'm not risking that happening again. Because like I got, I got to meet Kuro and I, I wished I could have given him a worm on a string. It would have been so funny, but I had not left. I still got a photo with him though. That was, that was very fun. It was a good time. Anyway. Let's head back to Dinah Date. <laughs> Welcome to the Bell House. You two take a seat wherever you like. As they pass by us, Mom follows suit, grabbing a couple menus as she does. That leaves me stranded alone up in the front as they find themselves a booth together near the back of the diner. 
with them occupied with the usual waitress spiel, I decide now's my best chance of sneaking into the kitchen area undetected. I work my way back up to a standing position and... Hey, that you, slacker? Busted. Don't even make it two feet. Oh, Olive? Hi. Hi. Master of Stealth. Look at them go. <laughs> Shoulders sufficiently slumped, I turn to face them and drag my feet over to their booth. Mom's face couldn't contrast mine more, beaming brighter than I've seen in forever. Oh no, the mom moment of like, oh, are these your friends? Hmm, <laughs> yeah. are these friends of yours? Exactly, just the instant like, oh, your friends? Let me get to know you. Let's let's talk about all. <laughs> They're from the club I've been telling you about. It's a pleasure to meet you both. I'm Olive's mother. She's so excited about this too. <laughs> nice to meet you, ma'am. Mom and Allison are eager to greet each other, whereas Eileen seems content with a small wave. Eileen bullies me. <laughs> Just be like, hi, mom. This is, yeah, this is my, my art club bully. <laughs> but it's like, I don't think Eileen has said like a single bullying thing, except maybe the wet cat comment. The, the sad wet cat comment is possibly not the nicest thing. But most of the time, it's just been very straightforward. Just like, um, don't mess with the supplies, which is a very fair thing to ask. <laughs> Decidedly more on edge than when she first came in, her eyes shift around the diner, landing on me more than a few times in the process. Yeah, look, the smile's gone now. She's, she's nervous. <laughs> so is this a family-run place? Yeah, not ours, though, if that's what you're asking. We're just plain old employees. I wouldn't say it like that. I've been working here since before Olive was even born. The owners have been very good to us. It almost feels like a second home. With how much time we've had to spend here lately, it's definitely felt like we've more or less been living here, that's for mm. sure. That's not what I meant at all. You've been told several times that you don't need to be taking on as many hours as you are, dear. <laughs> but they do. But they do, because they're making money for you. But you definitely don't plan on giving back to them anyone. <laughs> I know, I'm fine. Whining about it feels good, though. I'm going to get you out of that habit eventually. Good luck. While Allison is content to giggle at our banter, Eileen's eyes narrow. That's already something I'm used to seeing at this point. Uh, it's hard to figure out if it stems from annoyance like usual. Something about her face feels just a shade softer than normal. How long have you been at this? Part of me was hoping she'd start pushing Mom and I away so we could start on our meals. And that same part of me is stunned when she instead opts to continue the conversation. I think I know what this is. I think I know what this is. Like, Eileen kind of was a little bit against Olive joining the club because she thinks they're only joining for, like, a free payout to pass their classes. Like, she thinks they're just taking advantage of the art club. And now she's finally realizing what a hard worker Olive is. And she's maybe realizing, maybe my first impression was wrong. Maybe this isn't just a slacker who wants to take advantage of us. Like seeing that they're working here when they don't have to, just to like help their mom out. I think that is like the thought process going through Eileen at the moment. So she's probably like, oh, actually maybe they're not just like a, a lousy good for nothing. Maybe they are, they are actually trying. <laughs> uh, well, since I was old enough to work, I guess. Specifically when I turned 16, so just a bit over five years now. I see. It's nice that you yeah. found a nice spot for yourself so early on. I'm jealous. Oh, Allison is such a sweetheart. I can't help but stretch myself out in exhaustion as a, mean of, a means of silent protest. 
The grass is always greener, I suppose. <laughs> no, now I'm just thinking about when I made the silly analogy and mentioned eating grass. I, that phrase is forever ruined for me now. Uh, I'm, every time I see the grass is always greener now, I'm just thinking of the time on stream when I was like, well, it's, it's like you, you may have like really nice grass, but then you see another field and you're like, well, I bet that grass tastes nice. <laughs> and I was imagining a sheep, but everyone was like, well, like a, a person eating grass. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about it now. Every time I see the phrase, it's great. It's great. I'm a, I'm a very smart person and I think through everything I say before I say it. <laughs> As everyone is very well aware. <laughs> Every single time, it's just gonna be like, yeah, the, the grass tastes nicer on that side. <laughs> it's something, I guess. I'm sorry if Olive's been causing oh. you trouble in your club. Work's been a bit rough lately. Mm. I was correct. I mean, like, I can't say I've eaten much grass. Maybe there is grass that tastes really good. I can't say. The only time I've eaten grass was when I was like eight years old. And there, were, there was like this plant at my primary school and it smelt really nice. Like it had a really nice smell to it. And someone said, I wonder if it tastes nice too. So of course, me being very intelligent, I uh, took a handful of grass and ate it. And um, it, it tasted like a plant. Like <laughs> it did not taste as good as it smelled. But I think I can be forgiven for that. I was, I was a small child. I don't, I don't make a habit of eating grass. There are so many things that taste so much nicer. Yeah, it was like such a surprise. Like, oh my goodness, this, um, this grass tastes um, not nice. <laughs> oh, you used to break the backs of fuchsias open and lick the nectar from it. Wait, did that actually taste good? I've never tried flowers before. The, the only like flowers I've ever tried have been like when I've had like rose lemonade and it's had rose petals in it. Yeah, it's just sugary water. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. Are onions plants? I think they are. <laughs> yeah, I meant specifically like non-food plants. But yeah, I, I, I don't eat grass. That's what I was trying to say, basically. Anyway. <laughs> They've been fine. Our club's pretty small. It's nice to have someone new around. Yeah. That's good to hear. I noticed the nickname Slacker earlier and got worried for a moment. Oh, I wonder if that's going to make Eileen feel bad now. <laughs> oh, I... Yeah, it Don't is. worry about it. It's just a me thing. Your kid's been doing okay, given everything. It is. That's exactly what it is. I love that. Eileen had this impression that Olive is just like a slacker good for nothing, just no no effort, all results. And she's finally realized how hardworking they are, and now she feels bad. <laughs> I can't even try to hide my shock. She almost sounded nice there for a second, or at the very least sympathetic. Rather than leave my dumbstruck expression on display for everyone to see, I try to push it away with some conversation. Uh, so what brings you two here anyway? I feel like running into each other like this is a bit of a needle in a haystack moment. I don't think it's that big a place. I mean, you're the one who's working in a gimmicky little place like this. I'm more surprised you've never had something like this happen in five years. It's not the first time, not even in the past few weeks. That's what <laughs> makes it scary. Yes, yeah, suddenly everyone has just decided to come here at the same time after never coming here before. Huh. Tis the season. <laughs> I've wanted to come for a while. We passed by it earlier in the year. <laughs> I love Alice. I promised we'd make the trip before winter hit, and it's been getting colder lately. Oh, she's blushing. She's embarrassed. That's really cute. I love these two so much. I, I, 
I love these two. An exceedingly rare blush from Eileen. It wasn't exactly hard to assume things about these two, but having it set in stone does recontextualize re re things a little bit. I know how to read. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry we've been <laughs> keeping you. Let me get out of your hair. Just shout when you want to order. August suddenly realizing this is a date. I love it. You get ready too, Olive. Yeah. Well, do. It was nice talking with you two. Same to you. Thanks in advance for the food. Yeah. Nice chatting, Olive. That sounded really genuine too. I think it really was like a. It was nice chatting. I. I like that Eileen had this moment of realization of like, I think I got the wrong impression about them. They're actually pretty decent. <laughs> a surprising reaction, but I'll take it. I make my way to the front of the diner and start preparing for the final couple of lunch rush meals. Yeah. A few days later, we are skipping. Oh, I really like that. I like that so much. It's it's nice having these little moments of um like the relationships growing. Like the moments of realization and stuff. Like, yeah, Olive isn't just looking for a handout. They they actually do want to put in the effort. Cause you can totally see where Eileen's coming from too. Like it's if someone just rolls into the art club someday and just goes, yeah, I'm failing the year, I need to join a club, I just joined this one. It'd be very easy to just be like, doubtful of the intentions. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Number three, the time you lent me all your art supplies. I don't think I would have ever tried something new otherwise. I can't really take credit for that. It was Eileen who helped you out. Yeah! That's three, though. I guess you win. Yeah, extra line. <laughs> I just wanted to hear the voice for the extra line. Yeah, Eileen Path also has a couple stray flavor lines. Yeah, I love the little flavor lines, too. It's like, thankfully, it's easy enough to notice when they are, like, when it's just, like, a couple little extra lines. That's why I really like visual novels that have the system where you can skip and then it will only skip text that you've read and the skip will turn off when it's like a line you haven't seen that's like my favorite thing in visual novels because because i i never save i'm i'm really really bad at remembering to save when i'm playing visual novels unless there's an active choice so being able to just like skip through the text and find extra things that way is i love it Anyway, here we go, more, more Eileen. The sun hangs outside the art club windows as the day draws to a close. Caprice has been a lot more hands-on since her unneeded apology, but today is another one of those days where she's preoccupied, leaving Eileen in charge of closing up the club room. With Wallace gone and Alison over at the campus's ceramics kiln, only Eileen and I occupy the space. Shifting between her own work and checking over mine, she's been more forthcoming with help as of late. <laughs> I wonder why. No, look, Caprice had the same problem. Picture a light bulb floating around your subject. The shadows would be way harsher than this here. Ah, lighting. The, the one thing I am terrible at. I'm terrible at many things, but mostly lighting. She takes my notebook and starts doodling a few spheres with her pencil, each with various intensities of shadows and light positions. If you want to go strong with your shadows, that's fine, but you need to at least understand how these things interact with each other. Right. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay, don't apologize, Olive. Just take it on board. And thank her. Don't apologize for something like this. It's a learning process. Eileen's ability to transition in and out of teacher mode so effortlessly while keeping her colorful personality in check is honestly impressive. Satisfied that I've probably gotten the gist, she
she returns to her canvas and resumes her painting. I don't want to bother her again so soon, but there was something she said that caught my ear. Hey. What is it now? You said Capri says the same issues mm. with this kind of stuff. You mean that thing you and her were working on a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, the thing that is definitely her final project. Yeah. She brushes away at her work. Has she talked to you about it at all? Well, no. Then it's not my place to talk about it. Then it's none of your business. Yep. I respect Eileen so much. She's great. The words are cold, but the tone isn't. I swear she gets harder to read every time we talk. She's working through her own issues, same as you. Give her the same respect and personal space as you think you deserve. That is such a good way of wording it. That's a... That's a really good way of wording it. I love that. That's... An awfully nice gesture, given it's Eileen talking about Caprice. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Stop apologizing! <laughs> you apologize about nothing more than Allison does. I think it might just be an Eileen thing, though, honestly. Like, I say this, I think if Eileen was talking to me in that kind of stern manner, I would also just be apologizing. She just has that kind of aura around her where you you feel like you have to apologize for existing in the same air as her because she's so Eileen <laughs> I thought that one felt necessary at least yeah that one was fair it's natural to be curious about her especially given your circumstances huh She glances over at me, the corner of her mouth pulling upwards in a small, barely noticeable smirk. I feel my face grow warm, though I'm not sure why. <laughs> I love this expression. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It's like, stop apologizing. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love that face. The face of, I, I know what you are. Her being your tutor and all. <laughs> yeah, what did you think she meant? <laughs> oh, uh, right. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I love that that blushing is so good. What's your take on her anyway? If it's okay to ask. Yeah, like, do, do you hate her? <laughs> Ooh, this question causes her to stop her painting entirely mulling over a response for considerably longer than the initial inquiry. I used to not be able to stand her genuinely. I don't think we could be further opposites. So far, so obvious? Sometimes it still feels that way, and I just want to throw my hands in the air and walk out mid-conversation. She's exhausting. Yeah, that's fair. I'm surprised you haven't yet. Yeah, well, I'm a notoriously bad judge of character. Just ask Allison. <laughs> what does that mean? Up until meeting you at your work, oh. I had you pegged as a lazy bum trying to get others to dig you out of a hole you rightfully fell into. See, I I read her so well. I love that I love that I was immediately just like, yeah, I think this is what's going on here. And now I'm being proven right. It it makes me feel powerful. <laughs> I don't think that's entirely unfair then you'd be wrong. It is unfair. Because you work so hard and you don't recognize it. And you have, you are worth so much and you don't see it. Olive, Olive, you are good. You are good and you deserve the world. Anyway. <laughs> Hearing that from her admittedly feels nicer than I'd expect. I sort of want to ask her to elaborate, but I decide it's better not to press my luck and just be thankful for what I've been given. Yeah, if you tried to press for more, you would probably be told to shut up. Anyway, my point is, uh... I'm trying to get better at being patient with people. Allison does more than her fair share keeping me grounded. Yeah, Allison's so good. 
It's hard not to appreciate Eileen's sincerity, especially with how distant she feels a lot of the time. She returns her eyes once more to her easel. If you talk about this conversation with anyone, I'm telling Caprice you are sticking your nose into her personal business. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and then the Eileen I recognize returns. Unlike before, however, I respond to her with a smile. Yeah, the, you're getting to know Eileen now. It's like even though she says things that seem really harsh, she never means it in like a super harsh way. She just doesn't know how else to say it. <laughs> Cross-hatching, right? And now we skip. Oh, and they're fine in the hallway. I forgot about that. Ah, it's so funny seeing everything like in fast motion. No, oh, the, the the project scene. Ah. I love this game so much. I love it so much. I... I'm... I'm so excited for when I fully complete it and I can leave a Steam review, but I feel like I'm going to write an entire essay as my Steam review. It's... I... There's so much I want to say about this game. It's gonna be so long. <laughs> So good. I really need to like sit down at some point, like take some time to like sit down, go through all the games I've played and loved and write reviews for all of them. Because I, I always know like reviews have like such a good effect on games and like seeing the positive reviews thing go up is always very nice, but I always forget to do it. So I, th there's so many games where I, I want to share how much I love them. And I haven't done it yet. I need to arrange that. Yeah, as Eileen promised or perhaps threatened, we've chosen to end the day with one last club outing at the usual pizza place. Uh, the first outing in which Caprice isn't eager to make herself the center of attention. Can't say I blame her. Heck, I can't deny feeling the same way right now. Eileen, however, is quick to notice and is the first to lift her glass in a toast to our relationship. An act I can only imagine as some sort of revenge for her. <laughs> to our love-struck club leader and her new partner. Thanks, Eileen. Thanks, that's great. Allison's usually the first to shy away from needless teasing, but even she follows Eileen's lead, raising her cup to the air. Wallace seems content to immediately start sipping away at his, though. Cheers! To Caprice and Olive, I'm having a sippy. I love them. I love them all. Oh, thank you for the hydrate. I'm gonna have to have another one now. Just because, I just, I just have to now. <laughs> thank you for the hydrate. Cheers. The drinks only look higher and higher up as Caprice and I shrink into our seats in unison. I feel the red on my face intensify as Wallace finally brings up his mug as well. To all relationships in the club, old and new. Here's hoping Caprice and Olive were even a fraction of how lovey dovey you two turned out in the end. Oh, bless him, he saved us. <laughs> I love how he's just like, yeah, that's enough teasing. I'm turning it back on you too now. Wallace is so great. Wallace is so good. I love how, like, to begin with, I was like, I don't know how to feel about Wallace. And then the more, like, that I play and get to know everyone, I'm just like, Wallace is great. He's like the, the big brother that you kind of, like, joke around with. He's great. That's enough to bring Allison and Eileen's cups down quick. Being the only one left in the air, Wallace gives a shrug as he brings his beer back down to his lips. Caprice and I pull ourselves up, no longer the center of attention at the table. 
It isn't long before Allison turns back our way, however. <sighs> you two are so cute together. I had my hunches pretty early on. Oh, yeah? Uh, <laughs> thanks, Allie. I love the thought of just like, oh, congratulations. I knew you were gay. I knew. I knew the whole time. <laughs> I'm amazed you found someone who could keep up with you. Hey, what are you implying? <laughs> While the rest of the club bants and bickers, Eileen taps me on my arm, drawing my attention from the rest of the crowd. She takes a sip of her beer, free of her faux celebratory cheer she was leading just moments ago. Sorry, couldn't resist. She pulled something similar after Christmas last year, and I've been waiting to turn it around on her. I was oh. starting to get worried I wouldn't get the chance. Oh, yes. I love that Eileen here is literally just like, uh, sorry, that wasn't... That wasn't, like, for you. That that was because I wanted to get back a caprice. <laughs> that definitely sounds like a caprice thing. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Her face contorts as she recalls the memory. You've really signed yourself up for a handful. Yep. That's what'll make it fun, I think. Eileen brings her mug to her lips again, ending another small drink with a smile. <laughs> Something funny? Just thinking about what Wallace said. It's almost scary how well you're keeping pace with her. Uh huh. I wonder if Eileen thinks she sounds deep, or if she's just a lightweight and already tipsy. I'd be shocked if it was the latter, but that's the only explanation that makes sense to me. Just by how fast you're able to change, I mean. You're almost unrecognizable compared to a few months ago. Oh yeah, when you thought they were a lazy bum. <laughs> Allison and I have been together for just over a year now, and... I think the extent of my personal growth is don't loathe Caprice anymore. No, I th I think Eileen has grown way more than that. Like, remembering First Snow and what she was like there, she is so much more open than then. Like, even, even if she doesn't, like, fully realize it. Like, she was willing to change her perspective on Olive when she got more information about them. And I don't think the Eileen from before Allison would have even tried to get to that point. So that's nice, I think. I mean, I'm still relatively new to the circle, but I'm sure there's more to it than that. I don't feel like I've changed much either. Yeah, I think it's the kind of thing that's easier for other people to recognize than for you yourself. Something I've been through too, like when I, like since I started streaming, uh, I've I've had moments where like my mum said to me, "Oh, you're you're so much better at talking to people now. You're you're so much more confident now. You're you're doing so much better now." And I'm like, "I am. Am I? It doesn't feel like I am." But like, as someone like slightly outside, she recognizes it. Like, the little things that you don't spot yourself, other people are more likely to spot it. I wonder. It's nice to hear from other people though. When it's positive things. If it's negative things, like, just don't say it, that's bad. <laughs> Her next sip is considerably slower, breaking eye contact and staring blankly at nothing in particular. I love you just the way you are, Eileen. Hi. Oh. Her quiet musing is interrupted by Allison, smiling sweetly at her girlfriend. The rest of the table's eyes focused on the two of us as well. I love it. Allison is just such a sweetheart. She's just so sweet. I feel like I've I've called her a sweetheart so many times. Like if if I had one word to describe Allison, I'd just be saying sweetheart over and over again. It's, she she's just a sweetheart. It's it's who she is. She's great. They're all great. Eileen is quick to fluster. The victory over Caprice she felt just minutes before falling to the wayside. Look at the blush. How long has everyone been listening to our conversation? Probably the whole time. Somewhere around the way you called me a handful and tried to scare Ollie away from me. You're putting words in my mouth. Only some. For a dramatic flourish. 
Spoken like a true writing club member. Blasphemy! Oh, how dare you, Wallace? <laughs> That's twice tonight I've been dragged onto center stage and been embarrassed for it. As much as part of me wants to hide away, I can't help but feel thankful for the group of people I've managed to stumble into. I, me too. I love it. This isn't about Allison and I. Tonight is Caprice and Olive's thing. Why can't it be about everyone? In that case, how about another toast? To the two happy couples? No, we already had a toast for that. What about a toast to Wallace? <laughs> Eileen narrows her eyes in response, which only seems to cause Wallace's smirk to grow larger. Caprice, meanwhile, seems eager to gain back the ground she lost at the start of the night. I'll drink to that. Absolutely not. Cheers. I think it's a nice gesture. Backed into a corner, all Eileen can do is close her eyes with a sigh. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> and you said you were worrying about not being able to change. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for your commentary. It's rare to have an opportunity to rib Eileen. A narrow window I'm eager not to let pass by. So, how did they say cheers in Germany again, Eileen? Prost! Haven't you done enough? <laughs> Ooh, it's been a while. Prost? Prast? It was something like that, right? Prost! You four are going to settle for a cheers or nothing at all. All right, cheers it is. Thank you for agreeing. And so we do. Ah! With a final raising of our cups, the club closes out the year. Yay! Cheers. I'm sure nothing bad can happen from this point onwards. I forgot it's... I forgot it was the aquarium date. That means I know what's coming next. No! <laughs> Oh, this new scene? Yeah, this is a new scene! Oh, of course, because this is when Allison came around and gave the mug last time. Haha. -ha. The last few days before the holiday rush effortlessly snuck up on me. I sit on my couch with a couple of gifts I've been putting off wrapping, which is thankfully the extent of my worries for today. There's my Christmas with Mom coming up, not to mention the big family meetup at the Clark's. It'll be a while before life stops feeling busy, so I'm making a deliberate attempt to savour the quiet, even with yesterday's date still dancing on my mind. The silence doesn't last, however, as my phone begins buzzing on my table. I pick it up, expecting to see Caprice's name staring back at me. Instead, Eileen? That's probably the last person I would have expected. I'm filled with equal parts worry and curiosity as I accept the call. Hello? Hey, dumb question. Do you know when Caprice is heading home for Christmas? What? Uh, we're heading out the day of, first thing in the morning. Why? Deadlines. There's a small pause, but only a small one. I just need to get some paperwork to her mm. and wanted to catch her before... Wait, we? <laughs> oh, I was invited over by her mom, so I'll be joining them this year. Christmas with the parents, huh? My condolences. It's okay, Eileen, not everyone's parents are like your mom. <laughs> I can practically see the sneer on her face. Things are tense, but they seem like yeah. nice folks. I'm not too worried. About them, anyway. Yeah. I'm sure they'll be fine. <laughs> Just call it a personal bias. I am more than glad to be spending Christmas here this year. Oh, I... It, it hurts so much seeing this, knowing how things go, because it's like... Eileen making the painting, she also thinks it's gonna go well and it's gonna help everything out. It's... Yeah? What are your holiday plans? Is it nothing? 
After thinking back to my initial impression of her, it's surprising how easy making small talk with her is now. Just as I said, yeah. a nice, quiet year. Probably gonna spend a few hours on Christmas Eve with Allison's old roommate and yes. my sister's coming down for a day on Christmas proper. Oh, wait, her sister's coming! Yay! Oh, I love that. That sounds like a lovely Christmas. Doesn't sound like my definition of quiet. Yeah, I love that we get Rose and Eve mentions. I love them. You should have been here last year. <laughs> this will be absolute bliss in comparison. Hey. I can almost hear something resembling joy in her voice. Vaguely, if I really try to listen for it. Besides, I don't think you get to criticize my idea of what quiet is when you're spending the holidays in a hornet's nest. Don't worry, it's fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm sure everyone will be happy and merry and bright. I finished taping the top of the first gift, grabbing the spool of ribbon to the side. I've never not sucked at this part of the process. You think it'll be that bad, huh? Hmm. I'm choosing to be optimistic against my better judgment. Yeah, a better judgment is kind of on point here. Could have fooled me. Yeah. Yeah, th this is her being optimistic. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I think it'll be a disaster. Thanks. Yeah. That doesn't sound like my definition <laughs> of optimism either. And I'm just straight up just like, yeah, I don't think it's going to work at all. I think it's just going to be bad. But Caprice is stubborn. If she wants it to work mm. out, she'll brute force it into happening if she has to. Very true. Very true. She would never give up, would she? She's so strong and passionate. She'd never lose all faith in reconciliation and give up entirely, would she? <laughs> Where am I? Mm. Sure, everyone will be happy and merry like Mike and Miss Shifton. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be lovely. The, the happy family. <laughs> Goodbye. Anyway. <laughs> I can't argue with that. You least of all. Yeah, yeah. I placed the box down on the table after spinning it a bit, checking for imperfections. The bow looks... passable? Which is a step up from my usual attempts. As good as I could hope to make it, in any case. Anyway, thanks for the info. I'm gonna drop for now. Enjoy the rest of your holidays. Yeah, you too. Say hi to Allison for me. Will do. Yeah. I wait patiently for the click signifying the end of the call, but it never comes. I lift the phone from my ear to make sure it's acting okay, only for Eileen to continue as I'm staring at the screen. Olive. Oh. Huh? Yeah? Yeah? Let me know how it goes. Mm. Christmas at their place, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You worried about her? Probably should be, yes. Never mind. See you. Wait. I'll keep you up to date as best I can. Promise. Yeah. Thanks. Whew. It arrived a bit late, but the long-awaited click finally comes, and Eileen is gone, leaving me alone with a box that looks sadder and sadder the more I look at it. <laughs> See, I'm really good at wrapping presents if they are boxes. Like, if it is just, like, a rectangular box or a square box, I can wrap those pretty well. And I'm also pretty decent with ribbons if I get, like, the plastic ribbons and then, like, run the scissors along and make them curl. <laughs> I can make presents look quite nice like that. But if it's anything that is not just, like, a square box, I, I'm rubbish. I'm so bad at wrapping. Bump it up. And now it's Christmas! Christmas Eve. The nice times. Before... This. Yep. Ah. Uh. Huh. Huh. 
Okay, we're in act three. <laughs> we're doing it. Thinking back to Eileen scowling at me for wasting Caprice's paints, I try to resist a weary sigh. I won't make any excuses for her, but Eileen isn't as... whatever she's trying to be all the time, I think. Yeah. She cares about you in her own way. Why she doesn't show it is a mystery. Nah. Nah? Her reply is so short and definitive it surprises me. I go to press her for more, but she sighs and shakes her head before continuing. Yeah, and then we're back. We got the flavor line. Because last time it was Allison. She's just like, there's, there's no way Allison hates you. All right. Today's workload was pleasantly light, people opting to stay out of the cold for their food. Not to say it was entirely deserted, with families popping in here and there, but never more than a couple tables at a time. Mom already went home on account of the slow day, much to my relief. Here we go. Just as I think I may be afforded a similar luxury of a calm, pleasant evening, a certain repeat customer makes her way inside, the chime of the bell grating on my ears. There you are. Good. Hi. Hi, Eileen. Also, Zarok, hello. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the hydrate poster check drive-by care package. Thank you. I had a sip of my drink. I'm going to have a big stretch. But hello, thank you. Ah, sit up straight. Welcome, welcome. How's it going? Thank you for, for stopping in. You got a kitchen to clean. Oh, good luck. I hope the cleaning goes well. I I have a bedroom to clean. I need to I need to have like a big clean of my room at some point cuz my my desk is starting to get a little bit dusty. It's been a little longer than I usually leave it between dusting, so I need to get on that at some point. But not yet. Not on Twofold Tuesday. Oh, good luck with the cleaning, though. I hope it goes well. I'll still be streaming for another couple of hours, so... Hopefully you're not cleaning for two hours. It would be a little painful. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for the, the drive-by care package. Always appreciated to remind me to hydrate. Although, I've been doing pretty good at remembering myself to... to keep sipping my drink. Mostly because there's just, like, so many moments where I'm just like, I... I, 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 I I need a sip to deal with that. <laughs> anyway. This is gonna be... Letting her know how Christmas went, I guess. Welcome to Bell House. What can I do for you? Oh no, wait. Yeah, no, it's... Yeah, this is after the meeting where Caprice was acting differently because of obvious reasons. Okay, yeah. Yesterday's meeting still fresh in my mind and my annoyance lingering. I treat myself to some curtness in my greeting. I told Allison I was going to get us takeout tonight. You do that here? You can take it out. <laughs> yeah, sure. Just pick something out and I'll get you a bag. Oh my goodness, the venom in their voice. Whoa, I'm I'm not used to hearing them so hurt, I guess. I, I can't think of the right word. Ooh, the sharpness there. I pass her a menu from our supply. She thumbs through it, her eyes seeming to skip right over most of the text. Hey, so remember when I asked you to keep me in the loop about how Christmas went down? Oh, yeah. You want to explain how the meeting ended yesterday? Oh, yeah, but... They, they probably didn't really say anything, huh? So Eileen's probably going to be hurt about not being kept in the loop. I see. 
ear. There it is. Unlike her to skirt around what she really wants to say to this extent. It's been an absolute mess. It entirely slipped my mind. Her eyes narrow as she continues her scan, no doubt pondering our selection of soups, surely. Oh, hydration breaks built into games would be an interesting feature. Oh, it's it's an interesting thought, but also I, I feel like I would get so annoyed by that. Like, I remember there was one game I played at one point and it kept like popping up reminders to be like, hey, you've been playing for a really long time. Remember to take a break. And like, because I'm a cat, every time I would see that, I'd be like, well, I was going to take a break, but now because he said that, I don't want to. So I'm going to keep playing. <laughs> Just to be contrary. <laughs> so, want to explain why Caprice was upset when I called her request dumb and annoying and I hate her? <laughs> yeah, I, c I can't imagine what the problem there is, right? It's fine. Good soup. It's definitely the soup selection. Ah, oh, Warframe does that and you ignore it out of spite. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like, whenever I see stuff like that, I'm always like, well, even if I was going to take a break, now I just want to go against what I'm being told to do. <laughs> well, it's unslipped now. All right. Sure has. Thanks for that. This is such an interesting conversation. I take this rare opportunity to return her glare. To my complete and utter shock, she actually relents. At least a little. Most of it went fine. Better than you'd think, even. Could have fooled me. Until Millie unwrapped that painting you were so bothered about. Eileen clicks her tongue in response. You aren't putting this on me. Not just you, no. If it was as bad as you want to claim, then you should have said something earlier. Mm. Eileen's intimidating even when she isn't raising her voice. Ironically, it's only when she's yelling in my face that I don't feel like backing down. <laughs> Defensive time. You shouldn't need someone to tell you when it is and isn't okay to treat people like dirt. Yes, Olive, say it louder. <laughs> I wasn't treating her like anything. That painting should have made it obvious that... That you like her friend at least a bit. Then answer her question. If you didn't want to do it, then why did you? I... <sighs> Ugh, you're making me talk about emotions and feelings. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, RuneScape does that too. <laughs> it's only been five hours, please relax. Look, I'm just like... It's just always kind of funny to me how being told to do something makes me feel so so contrary like I, I see someone say like oh you gotta do this thing and I'm like well no I don't I was going to but now I need to prove that I don't because you said you were going to <sighs> in lieu of something to hit or kick she settles for slamming her menu on a nearby table with that out of her system, she leans against the diner's wall, arms crossed, allowing herself a moment to calm down. What was wrong with it? She wasn't wearing her wedding band. All this over a five-minute touch-up. Yeah. I know she knows a strip of paint isn't the biggest issue here, but I want to give her a chance to admit it before I spell it out. I thought it was a good plan. It made sense. Mm. And even if it wasn't, she always finds a way to make things work out for her regardless. Mm. Yeah, well, not this time. Oof. Mm. Mm. Remorse doesn't suit Eileen. Watching her try to sort out her thoughts, occasionally bobbing her head side to side, makes me feel like I'm looking at a total stranger. I wonder if she still would have gone through with it if I just shut down her last second begging. I'd have a clean conscience, at least. 
You're ignoring the actual problem. Yeah. Am I now? Mm-hmm. The painting isn't the issue here. The ring is such a small detail that I doubt most people would have even considered it. What you should feel bad about is how you treated her at the meeting. You knew about her problems with Millie. You clearly knew how much she was banking on this painting working out. And then you just went ahead and said you didn't want to do it and fully like belittled her, yeah. I know you and Wallace well enough by now, or I think I do anyway, to know that that's just how you guys talk. But, you know, there's a time and a place, and yesterday wasn't it. Even if things had magically worked out over the holidays. Yeah. The last thing she needed was her closest friends ganging up on her on top of everything else. She doesn't deserve that. She doesn't. She deserves the world. She deserves so much. She taps her foot as rapidly as her boots allow, shaking the nervous energy out of her system any small way she can. How was she? After you two left? Devastated? She cried on the way home. What do you want me to say, Eileen? Damn it. Yeah, you messed up. She reaches behind her to grab her previously discarded menu in a bid to buy herself some additional time to think. The facade doesn't last long, though, as she drops it again soon after. I can't stand... She almost looks surprised as she manages to catch herself before one of her typical tirades started. Caprice is loud, annoying, refuses to let people rest for even a second so long as she's around. When it became obvious you two were a thing, I was stunned. Hmm. How could anyone have that kind of inner peace to think, I want to spend every day for the rest of my life around someone like that and actually mean it? Just as I feel motivated to snap back, her face softens. I was happy for her. Happy for you. It's hard to deny that my life's gotten better since she got involved in it. And I thought it was only fair that some of that circled back around to her. Oh, we're getting to know what Eileen actually thinks now. There's your answer. Her answer. A sigh as her train of thought reaches its conclusion. I'd never admit any of that to her. Maybe I should. Yes, you should. <laughs> yeah, don't you dare, Susan. <laughs> don't even think about it. Realizing how she must look right now, she opts to hide her grief-stricken face behind her menu rather than try to force a new expression to take its place. Will you apologize to her for me? <sighs> Assuming you'll see her way before I get the chance. I shake my head, not sure if she can even see the act hidden behind her makeshift screen. I'll do whatever I can for her, but that's on you. Maybe at the next meeting. Yeah, you need to be the one to say that. She needs to be the one to apologize. The next meeting. Yeah. Sounds fair. Thank you, Olive. Uh, her answer, get the truth from Eileen. Uh. Huh. We did it. My mouth curls upward just ever so slightly, and I feel lighter than I had a moment ago as my frustration finally starts to leave me. The menu in her hands, by contrast, starts looking considerably heavier as it slowly comes down from Eileen's face. Nevertheless, her posture suddenly seems more relaxed than it did when she first buried herself in it. So, ready to order? Yeah. Ready to order. Also, Lyra, hello! Welcome, welcome! And now we skip. I think there's probably going to be, like, another tiny bit of flavor text, too, so I'm gonna keep skipping until the end. But, uh, yeah! I think we'll be able to get through everything in this stream. I, I know I did 
procrastinate incredibly at the start. I know I did get very distracted at the start, but it's not going to take two hours for the next one because I'm not going to talk for an hour about Vexpo again. <laughs> so I think we'll be good for everything. Oh, why did, why did I have to show that? Even just for like a second, why? The suffering as I remember. Your brain is too full of emo emotional Elan quotes. <laughs> Truly the worst curse ever. I mean, it's a pretty great curse to have. Or I could talk about Vexpo again. <laughs> no, I do want to do both of these friendship routes and Perfect Circle. So I want to focus on that from this point onwards. I'm going to try and not tangent as much. But like, depending on how smoothly it goes, if there's any time at the end, I will be talking about it again. <laughs> But I, I love this game. Wallace is the first to leave, with Allison and Eileen right on his tail. Once they're at the door, Eileen gives Allison a couple pats on the back, urging her ahead as she returns to Caprice and I once her girlfriend is safely out of earshot. Caprice, here we go. That gets her attention just as well as anything else. I keep my head down, focusing on shoving things into my backpack and trying to keep my business out of whatever Eileen has planned for her. Sup, Elle? We aren't doing that. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to... <sighs> I'm sorry about how the painting went over. I didn't have much of a chance to say so before now. Oh, I'm so glad she said that. I'm so proud. A few seconds of silence as Caprice ponders Eileen's apology. Only a few, though. Huh. That's funny. I don't remember telling you what Millie thought of it. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry about it. I can suddenly feel a pair of eyes staring right through me. Oopsie teehee. Oopsie. As stiff as my spine suddenly feels, I manage to find the willpower to bring myself upright, only to find a playful smirk on Caprice's Sorry. face. Sorry. <laughs> I basically forced it out of them. If that helps keep Olive in your good graces. Aww. The smirk quickly evolves into a giggle. It's fine, both of you. That includes the painting, Yay. by the way. That's not what I heard. Oh. Another glare directed at me, this time from Eileen. It's been two minutes at most and I'm already exhausted from this conversation. She warmed up to it in the end. And even if she didn't, I asked you for the help. Yay! I'd never blame you for how things turned out. Oh, bless. Of course she wouldn't. Caprice is a sweetheart. I, I've, I've been using the word sweetheart so much playing this game. They're all sweethearts. I love them. Also, Lynn Starfall, hello! Welcome, welcome! How's it going? Oh, you're sick today! I hope you feel better soon. Thank you for stopping in! Welcome to Twofold Tuesday! I'm finishing up the, the art club routes. And then going into the, the bonus content. But I hope you feel better soon! Thank you for stopping in! But... But she feels bad still. Before she can continue expressing her guilt, Caprice cuts her off with a hug, doing its job of shocking Eileen with the added bonus of causing her to stumble just a bit. Hey, what's the deal? Just thought you needed a hug. Thanks for everything you've done, Eileen. I know I'm not your favorite person. Oh. <laughs> Ugh, you got that right. This is where I'd expect Eileen to try and pry Caprice off her, and I'm sure Caprice is anticipating the same. To my surprise, however, Eileen returns the embrace, wrapping her arms around Caprice. Oh, She's hugging back, what the heck? Wow! You're nowhere near the bottom, though. Yay! Unable to contain my smile, I try my hardest to commit the moment to memory, knowing full well that Eileen is going to force Caprice and I to forget it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it's like, this never happened, you got it? Never happened. Boop, and now we skip again. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Ah. 
with me. Ah, here they go. I will skip this time because I have seen the credits as beautiful as they are. Skip, 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 skip. Yay! Yay! Eileen friendship completed. Now it's Wallace time. We're going straight back into it. We're going straight back to Wallace. I am really interested to see how this one goes. Because this is going to be interesting from knowing that Wallace is good friends with Millie. From like that perspective. It's going to be interesting. But yeah, free study heart. We're going to dr draw with Wallace. He said he was writing, but yeah, comics. Little bit of both. A little bit of writing, a little bit of drawing. It's all art. It's all artistic in the end. <laughs> Here we go. Unfortunately, the idea of trying to pick up another new skill on top of everything else I've had to learn about art in the past few weeks just feels too daunting. Just to show I tried, I end up taking a pack of different weighted pencils. They all look the same, but each is adorned with a different number and letter. Oh, it's the... The, uh... The, um, uh... Hardness, softness of the pencils. See, I know that much, at least. I, I know my HB from my 2B pencils, at least. I know that much. <laughs> Heading over to where Wallace sits, I plop down next to him and take out my own notebook. You give up easy. <laughs> Giving up, you say. Artistic of me. Thank you. Yeah, like, I, I only know about pencils. Pencils and pencil crayons. Done a little bit of stuff with charcoal before in the past. I choose not to. Because <laughs> charcoal looks so good, and it's such a cool medium for art, but it's also so easy to mess it up. It's so easy to just smudge everywhere. And... I'm a very messy person and I smudge it everywhere. <laughs> oh, both Wallace and Darren suffer from born to be chosen first, forced to be picked last by virtue of being men in an LN game. <laughs> oh, I'm really excited for the Wallace friendship path now because I, I love Darren's. I love Darren so much. I feel like Darren is like my canon route for the writing club. So I can't wait to see how this goes. Uh, you need a different pencil for mathematical drawing in middle school. Oh, for like... Stuff with like protractors and stuff and angles and like the geometry side of things. That would make sense. For me, it was always about art classes in school, but I, I never did it past like secondary school. I never did like advanced art classes. Um, but I, I did enough to like know my way around a few artistic materials but yeah anyway <laughs> it's more that i know my limits i don't have the brain space for anything else right now that's fair i get what she's saying and i will give it a shot just not today fair enough before you got here caprice was making sure we oh. knew how hard you've been pushing to pass Taking it easy isn't so bad once in a while. Wait, that's so sweet of her that she'd do that. I love that. Oh, last time you had art was in eighth grade. <laughs> yeah, I I did um, art GCSE when I was in school. Uh, my final piece for that was a, a really large canvas. I did like acrylics on canvas, and I was actually I was actually so impressed with the piece I came up with for that. Uh, the theme for the art piece was um, empty spaces, I think it was. So what I did was I did like a nighttime scene in a desert, but with a single tree illuminated by the moonlight. And I worked on like getting like the, the lighting on the branches of the tree illuminated by the moon. And I was really proud of how that turned out. Like I, I didn't think I was going to do a good job of it. And I looked back at it afterwards and I was like, actually, that looks good. I did all right. And I passed my GCSE too, so I, I must have done a decent job. But yeah, I haven't really done much artistic stuff outside of that. I do like doodling from time to time, but it's like a thing I do when I have free time and I don't have free time anymore. <laughs> I do kind of miss it. I like drawing. 
I'm not the best at it, but it, I think it's fun. Fun to just have a little doodle, just see what happens. Anyway, Wallace turn. She said that? I feel a heat rise to my face in embarrassment. As much as I'd like to downplay it, it seems Caprice is really taking my situation to heart. So what? Want to play for the other side today? Try your hand at writing a comic out? Uh huh. Bit of storyboarding? Uh, I guess I could do that. It's not really any different than a short story, right? It is so different. <laughs> Wallace smiles a bit to himself. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead and write it out. I'll take a look at it after. I love the thought of just like, oh, you, you've written this so well. Where would you put this in the comic? Are you just going to have a paragraph in the middle of the comic? you got to show the scenes. <laughs> I, I feel like, like writing for a comic is more like writing for like a, a movie script as well. It's very different to the paragraphs of a short story. <laughs> Everything about that sentence sets off alarm bells in my head. Whatever I said is so terribly wrong that he doesn't even want to entertain it. <laughs> I consider asking him, but he's already turned back to his own notebook. I think they're going to realize. I think they'll realize quickly enough. Why Wallace is like, yeah, no. I sneak a peek at the page he's working on, some sort of bulleted list, but he quickly notices my cheating and adjusts just enough to obscure it from my view. The only way out is through then. I start writing out a small story. <laughs> yeah, Wallace's smirk gives well them that <laughs> they don't know how stomped they're gonna get vibes. Yeah. <laughs> it's very much just like, you know he's just entertained by this. He's just Loving the thought of just walking into it and being like, hey, so you've done this. I'm going to show you exactly why it won't work. <laughs> but I feel like he'd be that kind of teacher anyway. He'd be like, just give it a try. And then I will show you through experience what does and doesn't work. Like, it's easier to just give it a bash and then work off that than to, like, drip feed the information from nothing. At least that's how I'd see it. I think so. All right, what have they done? A simple story, honestly. A young student has a dying houseplant and tries everything to save it. The caretaker ran to and fro, bringing water and sunshine, only to realize what the plant needed all along was love. Oh! <laughs> Wait, that's adorable. That is so adorable, but how are you going to do that in a comic? You got to show it. Please don't read it out loud. Please read it out loud. I love that. I love the story already. Please keep reading it. I love his, like, smirk here. He is so... He's so ready for this. <laughs> I love this expression. That's the expression of, like, I've, I've, I've got the hook in now. I'm ready to reel it in. <laughs> He knows exactly what he's doing, yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about a good story structure, but it's a safe answer after all. I guarantee it won't be any less mortifying when you have to draw it out, page by excruciating page. Yeah. So, how many pages will it be? Uh, probably the same as the script, right? No. <laughs> Try tenfold. Tenfold, not even twofold. It's a nice story, but without any dialogue, you'll need the visuals to carry it home. Yeah. No exposition, no purple prose. Just a student and their houseplant. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a lot of work. That's going to be quite a lot of pages. Uh. The scale of it dawns on me. Each page having its own composition, the amount of expressions I'd need to draw, figuring out the pacing. They get it now. They, they know now. They're realizing how different it is to draw for a comic, or to write for a comic even. 
Also, Lynn, welcome back. Thank you for lurking. Welcome, welcome. Um, Olive is learning how to write for a comic, and it's not just writing a story. Where our protagonist ends up in a polyamorous relationship with ten other girls. Is that tenfold? That would be so exhausting. That would be so much. This isn't the writing club. You'll need to write it out in a different format to yeah. make sense if you ever pass your script off to an artist to draw. Yeah, comics are very much about, like, the dialogue. It's like dialogue and then, like, a small bullet point, like Wallace was doing, like, the bullet points to set the scenes. Mostly dialogue. Or cool action scenes with lots of lines. All of this to say, if Caprice were here, you'd have failed. Yeah. Back to the drawing board, then. I sigh, dejected. Over the next hour, Wallace shares his notes with me, each and every page going right over my head. I love that. I love how Wallace made them write an entire story just to say, yeah, this isn't going to work. And he knew. He knew it wouldn't work. And he still made them do it anyway. It's so funny. Oh, look! A sea turtle! And now we skippy. That's so good. I can't wait to see how this... This friendship route develops. I'm really, really curious about it. I like learning more about Wallace. He's great. All right, a few days later. Ooh, in the library. In contrast to my struggles in art, I can appreciate the simplicity of my other classes, where there's only one right answer to every question. I just wish the research material was lighter. With my bag roughly 50 pounds heavier than it was when I first entered the library, I make my way towards the exit, eager to get this burden of books off my back so my poor spine can rest. Olive, is that you? Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness, with Millie, I see. The Wolfiel root, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> We've got Wallace the Wolfiel. Uh, do I still have that image? Hold on. Hold on, I, I have to try find something very quickly. Very important. Very important thing that I can't believe I didn't think of myself. Where is it? Where did I save this? Did I just like save it in my downloads folder? I did, I just saved it in my downloads folder. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, we need this up here for this route. Oh no, that's me. <laughs> there we go, perfect. Perfect, that's what we needed. Right, anyway, back to the game. Very important break, thank you very much for understanding. We we need the, the Wolfiel Wallace. <laughs> Looks just like him. Spitting image. Unfortunately, a familiar pair of students provide a sudden change in plans. She's quick to grab my attention in as loud of a voice as a library will allow. Her flagging me down after joining the art club is a surprise, though not as surprising as her conversation partner. I approach with a small wave, placing my bag on the ground as quietly as I possibly can as I reach their table. It's me. Good to see you again, Millie. And, uh, Wallace. Yeah. He gives a small nod, but not much else. How have you been? It looked like your bag was going to snap you in half. It's a little heavy. Ah, uh, it's fine. Just being over eager, picking up everything for all my classes in one go. Yeah. Don't run yourself ragged. Part of the learning process is figuring out how to pace yourself. Very true. A lesson I wish our club leader would take to heart. Yeah. Tell me about it. Millie meets my sigh with a small chuckle. So what's going on here? Leaking intel to the enemy? I make a deliberate attempt to control my tone to make it obvious that it's a joke, which I'm sure only makes it sound worse. Millie's smile doesn't change, at least, which is good. You're closer than you probably think you are. Mm. Now I'm curious. 
Yeah? I was in the writing club till Caprice and Eileen dragged me over. Literally. I feel like it needs to be said, so Millie and I catch up and talk about current goings-ons between the two groups now and again. Ha ha. Double agent. Waters may be a bit rough right now, but Caprice and I are still friends. Wallace has been kind enough to be my eyes and ears on the inside, <laughs> making sure things are still going okay. Oh, keeping an eye, making sure it's all right. That's very sweet, though. <laughs> huh. That's surprisingly tame, given how I've seen them act towards each other until now. <laughs> yeah, it's complicated. Guess just talking to her yourself is still out of the question for now. If only. Hmm. It's fine. Being a double agent has its perks. When you're on both sides, you're on no one's side. The fence makes for a comfortable sitting place. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you found a place that works for you. I'm content not being part of the larger picture. Oh, Olive. Oh, Olive, if only they knew. <laughs> what a line. I'm sorry, you're right in this picture. Like, th there's no escaping it. Too late for that, yep. I'm afraid. Your fate was sealed the second Millie waved you over. Wallace smirks at the confusion on my face. Millie's unwavering smile starts feeling a little more sinister as the seconds pass by. Huh? What we've said here stays with us. Millie has made people disappear over spilling less sensitive secrets. Oh, goodness me. How, how sinister and terrifying. Oh, shush. Shush, you're not meant to tell them about that. Next, you'll be telling them where the bodies are. I mean, what? <laughs> Even though it was an obvious joke, I can't help but feel a small chill run down my spine. Granted, that could just as easily be attributed to the strain it was under moments ago. In all seriousness, Olive, help Aww. look after Caprice, won't you? I know it doesn't seem like it, but I really do worry about her. You just met us at a weird time. Yeah, it's a very weird time. Also, Dima, hello! Yeah, I love, like, Knife Cat Millie, just like, yeah. But thank you for the Hydrate and Pasta check. I will have a sip of my drink. And a big stretch. Ooh. Oh, I feel like I need to stretch my legs too. I'm gonna do that. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Ow. Oh, I shouldn't have tried to stretch my legs. I'm a fool. I'm a fool. I'm a silly fool. I did so much walking on Sunday. My legs are so sore. Xander was laughing at me yesterday as I was trying to, like, go down the stairs. I was doing this weird kind of waddle walk because every single muscle in my legs was aching. And he was just laughing at me, just like, do a lot of walking. <laughs> oh, they're still sore today, too. I'm, I'm just unfit. I need to walk more. I need to exercise more in general. But I'll do it eventually. Just wait until I get Miku boxing. I'm going to be so fit. I'm going to be so healthy. But yeah, yeah, Vexpo, I did so much walking. But it was worth it. Yeah, sure. I'll do what I can. I, I love hearing Millie say that, though. I lift my book bag up, grunting a bit as I manage to sling it over my shoulder. It's been nice talking to you. See you at the club, Wallace. Yeah. I pivot on my foot, placing my back to the two as I start making for the exit. Oh, and one more thing. Uh-huh. And then I stop. Like Wallace said, please don't repeat any of this. We're still <laughs> fighting after all. Yeah. <laughs> yes, don't worry, I will not tell anyone where the bodies are. It's fine. Even without seeing her, I can visualize the comically sinister grin she's wearing, as her voice takes the form of an evil sorceress or some such. <laughs> it doesn't last, though, as she and Wallace share a laugh at her delivery. I didn't hear a thing. Don't worry about it. I leave them to their club talk, my pace quickening just a bit. 
Yeah, let's get out of there. Let's skedaddle. Right, next scene. Aha! Uh -huh, another flavor text line. I suppress reacting to her comment by feigning interest in their ceiling. It seems the stakes are higher than I thought. Wallace and I's secret betrayal with the writing club gains another layer of complexity. Yep. I try not to look too obvious as I glance around. <laughs> I love how they're just like, yeah, I'm part of this double agent thing now. Oh, I love Haley. I love all of them. I I feel like it's it's silly whenever I'm like I see a character and I'm like I love you cuz I love them all. <laughs> Here we Number go. I want to hear three. this. Then you didn't even draw anything. Wallace is such a bad influence. That's three though. <laughs> I guess you win. Well, it's okay. They learned how to script a comic book, so they're learning. Boop. Invisible Caprice. I'm skipping too much. Sometimes I can still hear her voice. <laughs> All right, few days later. Another day, another club meeting done. Sort of. I'm the first out the door today, eager to get home and crunch for a math exam tomorrow. It's been hard to keep my other courses in my periphery lately, as the happenings of the club and its leader has occupied more and more of my mind. The woman ready to meet me at the stairway seems intent on throwing away the spare ten minutes I had just secured, though. Playing hooky today? Hi, Haley. Hi. Just getting a head start home to focus on other school stuff. The club's wrapping up soon, anyway. Yeah. Quit telling people I'm dead. Sometimes I can still hear her voice. <laughs> she gives me a quick scan, checking for any tells to expose some sort of non-existent lie. She eventually seems content enough to believe me, her eyes finding their way back up to mine. So you have some time to talk then? Okay. Sort of defeats... <laughs> her expression is unflinching. At this point, it feels like even finishing the sentence would be an exercise in futility. What's up? Just wanted to share notes on club stuff. Oh, spice stuff. Caprice has been dodging questions about it at home lately. All right. All right, we're back on board with the spy. <laughs> Guess that's to be expected with you just outright joining the writing club. Yeah. She responds with a shrug. Guess she had that one ready to go. <laughs> Probably. So, spill. Spill what? I mean, it's been going fine. Uh, nothing really out of the ordinary, as far as I can tell. Really? Really, really? Yes. She brings her hand up to her face, resting her chin between her index finger and thumb in thought. Huh. Wonder what's got her so worked up lately, then. Hmm. Her pondering lasts for just a moment before her eyes snap back up. Right. I owe you writing info too. <laughs> okay, info exchange. What have what have we what have you got? <laughs> as curious as I am, I really don't have any more time to spend on this. You really don't. It's okay. Hey, can I go? I'll take up your offer if Olive won't. Hi. And with the arrival of Wallace, my early start has proven itself null and void. All I can do is slump my shoulders. Guess I'm in for the rest of this conversation now. Where's the others? Still packing up. Keeping everything on a laptop makes things pretty hassle-free for me, though. Oh, good point, yeah. The supplies are just on there. Hey, Wallace, been a minute. Several. I never thought about it, but it makes sense for Haley to have met all of the club members by now. It still feels weird to watch them interact so casually. The truth is that the writing club is still going through the usual motions. 
Honestly, I was hoping to get more information out of you by calling this a trade. Mm. I didn't even want to spend the time on this information exchange to begin with, and I still feel disappointed. Good to hear. Millie was talking about things being quiet when last we talked. That's a very generous word for it. More like nothing, yeah. That seems to get a genuine reaction out of Wallace as his eyebrows rise. Given how stone-faced he typically is, even that slight motion strikes me as unusual. What's that mean, exactly? The club's quiet and that there's barely anyone left in it. Yeah. Is this news to you? Mm. But Millie told me you had picked up a couple of members recently. Hmm. Technically true. Just me, though. There was another guy there for a bit, but he left pretty quick. Yeah, Dar Darren didn't stick around when there's no Olive there. None of this comes as new or surprising to me, but Wallace seems dumbstruck. Given how he and Millie seem to talk about this stuff semi-regularly, I can't imagine how any of this slipped under his radar. Unless... Hear me out. Unless Millie was purposefully lying because she didn't want you to feel bad about leaving the writing club, and she also wants to pretend that everything is fine, so she doesn't want to say how bad things really are, so she pretends that they are good, so you only get the impression that things are good because she doesn't want to talk about it being bad. Just a theory. Just a theory. <laughs> Wait, Suzume, yeah, there was no olive branch for Darren to rest on. <laughs> oh. Nope, just a Heather. Such a Millie move. I know, it's it's a little painful when she's just like, yes, everything is fine when it's not. So who's still around? Heather. <laughs> Another signature Haley shrug. Ignoring me and Millie? Just Tanya and Heather, and Heather's... Well, you know. Heather is Heather. Yeah. I've interacted with Heather a grand total of twice in my life, and I'm content to keep it at that. It doesn't take much of an imagination for me to fill in the blanks. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Wallace closes his eyes and lets out a small grumble. It's hard to tell if it comes from a place of contemplation or frustration. Likely a mix of the two. Sounds like Millie's been stretching the truth a bit. It's a really generous way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> you think she's embarrassed or something? No, I think she's desperately trying to convince herself that things aren't as bad as they are. I don't know. She's definitely a woman with pride, but... Happy Pride, everyone. <laughs> Wallace looks genuinely uncomfortable, even allowing himself to fidget a bit. It's not much, barely noticeable, but for someone like him, it's like a night and day change. Anyway, that's all I've got. I'll get out of your hair now. Sorry to keep you. That's all right, Haley. Yeah. Thanks for letting me leech off your conversation, Olive. It's been... interesting. Hmm. I wonder what Wallace is going to say to Millie now. Watching Wallace try to piece together the puzzle in his head feels surreal. He's never been easy to read before now. Though, I'm sure he still wouldn't be open to talk about it, even if I offered. Oh my goodness, Dai! Hello, Dai Fukuro! Welcome, welcome! Thank you for the resub for 38 months. That's so big. That's such a big number. What the heck? <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, welcome, welcome. Happy Twofold Tuesday. Everyone is fine and everything is great and there's no pain. Welcome. <laughs> it's fine, trust me. How's it going? I hope you're doing well. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for the resub. I'm currently doing what is probably going to be the last Twofold Tuesday stream. Although it depends how slowly I go. No, I, th I think I've decided this is going to be the last stream. So if I end up running over because I keep going on conversation tangents, then that's fine. I will just keep going. I'll just keep going until I've actually done everything. <laughs> it might end up being a long stream, depending how distracted I am. But uh, I, I love this game though, it's so good. But yeah, I'm, I'm doing a really good job at the moment of um, starting to talk about something, realizing 20 minutes have passed and going, oh, 
I should be playing the game. <laughs> but it's it's so close to the end now. We're so close. We're so almost there. I'm excited and also terrified. I think it'll be okay though. I'm, I'm not entirely sure how long things are, but I think it'll be okay. But yeah, I hope you're doing well too. Happy Tuesday. Good morning? Well, it is going to be morning. Early or late morning. Uh, do I wreck this game? I, I recommend this game so highly. It's so good. It's so good. I love it so much. I went into it not really knowing the extent of the game. And I'm really glad that I did because it has been... There is so much. There is so much going on but in like the most amazing ways. It's such a, a beautiful story about just love, but not just love in like a romantic sense, like love in a family sense, love in a friend sense. Like there's just so much love and I love it. And it's also made me cry multiple times, but, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a very, very good game. I, I recommend it so, so highly. Yes, <laughs> Adrian. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, I know it's going to be morning. It's like, have, have you slept? <laughs> I'd guess possibly not. I, If you haven't slept, I hope you can rest soon. If you have slept, good morning. <laughs> yeah, a game about love made with love. That's exactly what it is. It's so good. So good. Oh, you did. Oh, it's trash day. <laughs> Gotta get the bins out. That makes sense. But I thank you for stopping it. Thank you so much for the resub as well. I, it is very, very appreciated. Excited for Friday. I, excited? Is that the right word? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but thank you. I will continue to game now before I start talking about other things for half an hour. <laughs> uh, he's never been easy to read before now, though I'm sure he still wouldn't be open to talk about it, even if I offered. Yeah, no problem. See you two later, okay? Yeah. Sure thing. Good luck on your... whatever you're going to be doing. Yeah. With a nod, Haley and I start moving again. Me towards the stairs, Haley to the art club room. Wallace stands motionless, deep in thought until he's no longer in view. Deep in thought. Much to think about. One week later, can we skip? We can skip. Hallway fight. Good times. I'm gonna have some more monster. Ha! Huh. And there we go, we're getting to the end of Act 1! Yeah! They passed! Just skipping until the next Wallace moment now. Here we go, Act 2. Electric Boogaloo. So tense. <laughs> I'm gonna have some more monster. <laughs> I love the grand reveal of the relationship where the others are all just like, yeah, yeah, we figured. Yeah, we knew. <laughs> Here we go, pizza time. Wallace pizza time. As Eileen promised, or perhaps fret, uh, threatened, what, why, why, did I, why did I use an F sound there? Or perhaps threatened, we've chosen to end the day with our last club outing at the usual pizza place. The first outing in which Caprice isn't eager to make herself the center of attention. Can't say I blame her. Heck, I can't deny feeling the same way right now. 
Eileen, however, is quick to notice and is the first to lift her glass in a toast to our relationship. An act I can only imagine as some form of revenge for her. To our love-struck club leader and her new partner. Hey. Allison's usually the first to shy away from needless teasing, but even she follows Eileen's lead, raising her cup to the air. Wallace seems content to immediately start sipping away at his, though. He. The drinks only look higher and higher up as Caprice and I shrink into our seats in unison. I feel the red on my face intensify as Wallace finally brings up his mug as well. To all relationships he. in the club, old and new, Here's hoping Caprice and Olive are even a fraction of how lovey-dovey you two turned out in the end. Yeah. To everyone. That's enough to bring Allison and Eileen's cups down quick. Being the only one left in the air, Wallace gives a shrug as he brings his beer back down to his lips. Caprice and I pull ourselves up, Caprice immediately ready to take advantage of her second wind. That's a tall order. These two have a whole year of experience with all that mushy stuff. Hehe. <laughs> You'll catch up quick. <laughs> nuh -uh. The two keep this back and forth going for a few more rounds, blushes becoming more intense with every returning volley. Hey, Wallace. Thanks for the save. <laughs> getting under Eileen's skin is a lot more fun than getting under <laughs> yours. No offense. No, yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> Not taken. You aren't getting out of this scot-free, though. Oh? The instant dread deep in my stomach is unmatched by anything else. I'm a double agent, remember? Oh, you're right. Wallace's smirk isn't doing anything to ease things, either. I don't know what to make of that. She wants pictures. Oh no. And you agree to that? You? I figured it'd be a good enough trade for prodding Ooh. a bit deeper into what's actually going on in that club. That makes sense. That makes sense. Like, I've got you the pictures. Now you have to tell me the truth. Now you have to reveal the, the deep secrets. Yeah, pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> With all the Wallace a lot. <laughs> Amazing. And Sanya Mita, thank you for the hydrate and posture check. And we have a sip of my monster. And I will have a big stretch. The betrayal in their voice. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I thought it'd be funny. How? What would be funny? There it is. So much for finding Eileen a better target. <sighs> oh, Wallace. I like this route. I like this. Wallace only smiles as he digs around for his cell phone in his pocket. But uh, yes, hello! Happy Twofold Tuesday! Welcome on in! Welcome to Wallace time. Wallace time. The, the wolf eel. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. Uh-huh. He clears his throat in a loud, deliberate manner, successfully grabbing the attention of the rest of the table. The doomsday clock has started ticking. I want to get a picture of the happy couples. Would you mind getting closer to each other? Ideally paired off? Hmm. A mix of expressions litter the table, ranging from baffled to embarrassed to irritated. It's easy to guess who wears the last one. Since when have you been the sentimental type? Since I was asked to be. Yeah? By who? I'm going to exercise my right to remain silent. Mm. Yeah? In that case, maybe I'll exercise my right to break your phone. Nice. You'll have to point me to that law later. I think a photo would make a good memory. Oh, Allison. Ah. Allison is quick to cling onto Eileen's arm. I'd imagine the sincerity in her opinion is equal to her desire to de-escalate the situation. Ugh. <laughs> With something vaguely resembling acceptance leaking out of Eileen's lips, that just leaves Caprice and I. In fact, 
I had actually expected her to speak up sooner. But as soon as I... Uh, but as I turn to look at her, she appears to be pondering something or other. Since he was asked, huh? By who? You figuring it out? She doesn't last much longer in her trance. A smile crawling onto her face as she brings her head up and sc scooches her chair closer to mine. I'm on board! Yeah, I think she's kind of guessed that it's probably Millie. Looks like I've been outnumbered. Which is... You never had a chance, hehe. <laughs> Guess not. She pulls me close, and I return the gesture in as equal measure as I can. It looks like Eileen and Allison are in a similar boat. At least pretend to smile, Eileen. <laughs> Everyone is so pushy today. Yeah. Nevertheless, she complies. And with a small click from Wallace's phone, our final club outing of the year comes to a close. Nice! Boop, we skipped through the aquarium. Oh yeah, I wonder what the scene before Christmas is going to be like for Wallace. I'm so curious. The next day, here we go. Ha. Despite having the luxury of staying home all day, it nevertheless felt busy as I spent the day wrapping some last minute gifts and making some small miscellaneous preparations for the Christmas visit. Thankfully, with all of that put to bed, I finally have the rest of the day to myself. I sink into the couch and enjoy the silence for a bit. Earlier, I caught myself hiding the gifts in my closet by instinct, despite there being no one to hide them from. I guess the holiday spirit has managed to grab hold of me. As my mind wistfully dances between a handful of insignificant thoughts and observations, a rap on the door breaks the silence I had been immersing myself in. Ha. <sighs> With a small sigh, I pull myself up. Should have known better than to think I'd ever have time to properly unwind. <laughs> oh, that feels like such a mood. Ha. <sighs> I don't know who I expected to meet me at the door, but it wasn't Wallace, with Haley barely poking out from behind his shoulder. Hey, Merry Christmas-ish. Merry Christmas-ish to you too. <laughs> the Wallace path is secretly the Haley Millie friend path featuring Wallace from the Twofold series. I love that. I'm so here for that. I love this. <laughs> I love, like, I'm getting like a, a bonus, bonus package deal here. It feels like three for one. <laughs> I, I love Wallace's role of just being, like, there. <laughs> He's very good at being there. Why are you now imagining Wallace rapping? What What would that be like? He'd probably come out with, like, the weirdest things and then just be like, that's not weird. <laughs> uh, yeah. You too. Ish. Yeah, Merry Christmas-ish, everybody. Don't worry about the fact that it's August. I guess I stand there in my confusion for a second too long, as Haley's quick to squeeze her way past the man. Hey, can we come in? It's freezing. <laughs> oh, uh, right. Sorry. I widen the door and move myself out of the way, and the two waste no time shuffling inside. On his way in, Wallace shoves a bag of jerky into my hand. A Christmas gift for my folks' shop. Don't eat it all at once. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, I'll try not to. What a, what a great gift. Thank you. I close the door once they're both inside and toss the bag on the kitchen counter before returning my attention to them. I don't even know if it'll ever actually get opened, but I guess I appreciate the gesture. I'm guessing this wasn't just a jerky drop-off. No, that's the whole reason they came. They're gonna go now. Oh, the gacha game you play had a Christmas event last week. <laughs> oh, I always love when that happens. Like, when you're playing a mobile game that's been 
like localized into English and they keep the events on like the same schedule as the original game but like from when the game launched so it's they're at the wrong times I always find that so funny dang you're good a little bird told me about your holiday plans uh-huh I turned to face Haley, her demeanor totally unchanging. Little bird, I assume. Two for two. Yeah. It takes a substantial amount of willpower to not exhale in frustration. I don't mind talking to Haley about this stuff. We're in a similar situation and I really do feel bad for her. But I wish she'd exercise at least some restraint in who she decides to share information with. I love how that just says info and I just instinctively extended it in my mind. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why that happened. Okay, so what's that have to do with your visit? Just wanted to ask if Caprice has been talking about it at all. Uh -huh. I hope this doesn't sound bad, but we have cell phones, you know. Could have answered that in a quick text and saved you the trip. No, you can't 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 send a text that's um information that can be hacked into and received it's got to be word of mouth nobody knows this super secret spy business that was the original plan oh never mind <laughs> i needed an excuse to get out of the apartment mm -hmm. the vibes have been weird sorry if it's a bother oh poor Haley. Uh... A rare moment from Haley as her deadpan delivery cracks just enough to show something resembling genuine remorse. It's enough of a slip to make me feel bad for my previous grumblings. Yeah, keep up with the obsec, Olive. <laughs> anyway, to answer your question, nothing really out of the ordinary. She seems generally excited about it. Why? Hmm? Just comparing and contrasting. We haven't had a chance to talk much lately, but... Even I can tell, Millie's a wreck right now. Yeah. No matter how much she's tried to hide it. Yeah, that's true. That's an understatement. With the club being the way it is, I think the Christmas thing is just a lot of unneeded stress right now. Mm. The state of the writing club seems to be a sore spot for more than just Millie, as Wallace awkwardly shifts his balance around at the mention of it. I could have picked a better time to bail. It's, it's not your fault. I don't think she blames you for it. Hey, I'm sorry to ask, but can I get a rundown on the writing club? I know things are sort of dire right now, but I wasn't really around when it... well... wasn't. Mm. Wallace takes that as his cue to lean against the wall, preparing to start his history lesson. It was a pretty rapid-fire change. Old club leader and a few other members transferred out and left Millie in charge. Mm hmm Seems like it'd be normal to expect to lose members like that. Yeah, it is. The cascade effect was just a lot more severe than expected. The friends of the transfers ended up leaving, and the friends of their friends, and so on. Until it was like two people left. How about you? I left pretty early on, before it was obvious that we were in the middle of a mass exodus. <sighs> Millie knows her stuff and is more than capable, so I wasn't too worried. Mm, that's so sad. You two seem to be on pretty good terms though, right? I'm sure she doesn't see you as part of the entire thing. Yeah, it's such a shame, like, knowing that he left, like, when there were still, like, a fair amount of members. He must feel so guilty. He must feel so bad. Like, honestly, he probably left the writing club. Because the art club was in a problematic state of only having three members. like, <laughs> So he probably left to help the art club out. So for then the next thing to happen to be the writing club falling apart, he must feel so bad about that. You can't be in both of them. <laughs> His eyes narrow in contemplation, thinking for a second before he continues. She should. I'm not really any different. Oh, you are. Damn, who's that intelligent pile of handsome? This is Wallace. Wallace is great. I love Wallace. He's he I feel like he's such like a necessary character in this. 
<laughs> just him being around like makes a lot of sense and helps a lot of situations. He's good. It feels so sad that he's like so torn up about this situation when it's not his fault. No, in the top left. No, yeah, that's who I'm talking about. It's Wallace. <laughs> It's Wallace, can't you tell the, the glasses? It's... <laughs> yeah, it's who I was talking about. Don't worry about it. Wallace the wolf eel. Looking beautiful. You've stayed in contact, at least. Mm. Hmm. Guess that's the end of talkative Wallace. It was nice while it lasted. All the features on his face are pulled downward, painting a better picture than words possibly could. Olive. Yeah? Yeah? It's the holidays, so I'm not gonna ask you to snoop mm. around or whatever. And I know you're going for Caprice, but just keep an eye on both of them, if you can. Mm, oh, that's... Mm. There's no guarantee anything will even happen. No, they will. <laughs> and here I thought you were a pessimist. She got me. Anyway, I don't have the luxury of fence-sitting like you two. But I'll do what I can. Even if they're fighting, it's sort of hard to support mm -hmm. one and not the other. Yeah. This somehow gets a small smile out of two of the most stone-faced people I know at the same time. They've always been good at tangling themselves up in their own webs. Yeah. Not the sturdiest fence I've ever sat on. Yeah. That's the last thing anyone in the room says for a few moments. No one quite sure where to take the conversation from there. Or if there's even a conversation worth continuing. Haley's the first to eventually make a move, straightening out her jacket. Guess we better get going. Good talking to you, Olive. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas-ish. Yeah, gotta get to bed early so I can help with some holiday prep at the shop tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. You two stay safe. Yeah, same goes to you. E as my two guests say their goodbyes and make their way out the door, I can't help but read Haley's final farewell as an ominous one. So you're right. Yeah, it's, it's a wolf eel. <laughs> I learnt about them in the game. And Wallace is so lovely. Right, and now we skip again! I've nearly finished my can of monster too. I'm having so many more monster sips this stream than I usually do. I think I'm still... My brain is still empty from the weekend. I need to refill it with brain cells. <laughs> uh, and now we got to act three. Yay. Happy, good times. Yeah. Yeah, the moment where everyone is mean to Caprice. Great. So how is this gonna go? How's this Wallace scene gonna go? Here we go. Work was quiet, especially given the time of year. After the past few days, it was a gift I found myself extremely thankful for. The night at home has been even quieter, with just me alone with my thoughts and some white noise coming from whatever's on TV. It's almost too much going from one extreme to another so fast. It feels like the last time I've had a chance to just be alone with myself was a lifetime ago. My doorbell rings. The universe is always quick to correct itself. I managed to drag myself off the couch and to the door. Evening. Hi, Wallace. Fancy seeing you here. Oh. Yeah. I can only wonder what he's here for. After yesterday's meeting, it's hard to say his company is appreciated. I guess I probably deserve that. Yeah. His awkward shifting is accompanied by some muted rattling and clanking. I tilt my head downward and quickly find the source. A six-pack of beer bottles in his offhand. Figured we could each take one and I'd leave the rest here for you. 
<laughs> a peace offering. Uh. If you're trying to make peace, you shouldn't be starting with me. Yeah. I know, I know. I'll apologize to Caprice as soon as I can. But I want to talk with you, specifically. Yeah. After a moment of indecisiveness and a sigh, I move out of the way and beckon him inside. You can take the rest with you. I don't keep alcohol in the apartment normally. Thanks, though. Straight and narrow, huh? <laughs> yeah, Olive is so straight. <laughs> he practically beelines for the couch, placing the cardboard beer holder on the coffee table. You okay with drinking in here, at least? Yeah, just don't overdo it. I don't have a spare bed. <sighs> Very curious as to how this conversation's gonna go. As I lock the door and join him on the couch, he pulls out two of the bottles, passing one over to me after removing the cap. We both just sit there for a while, me taking the occasional sip while he takes large swigs at a time. Is he like building up the courage to, <laughs> to speak <laughs> using alcohol? So, yesterday was something. You can say that again. That's probably the best way to describe it, yeah. Yeah. Don't suppose you'd be up to explaining what went down over the holidays? I'm gonna twist your arm about it, though. I'm not sure where to even begin. Caprice tried to smooth things over with Millie with a gift, and it backfired. I'm oversimplifying things, but that's more or less what it boiled down to. Wallace wordlessly brings the bottle up to his lips again. How on earth is there even beer still left in there? Hmm. Talkative as always. I want to tease more out of him, but it's hard to do so when grunting is half of his vocabulary. <laughs> something wrong no no just thinking yeah it's difficult thinking is hard he pauses again he doesn't lift his bottle this time it must finally be running low i tried to get back into the writing club oh that's the last thing i needed to hear after how yesterday went poor caprice try Told Millie I'd be willing to come back and help get things back on track. Mm. Yeah, she shot me down pretty quick, though. Oh, wow. I, I didn't expect that. That's... Uh, I actually have no idea what to make of that. Did she say why? She just said she'd manage and urge me to stick with mm. Caprice. Nothing explicit. It is not hard to connect the dots. Yeah... It's hard not to be frustrated at the revelation. I feel my face wrinkle a bit as I think the new development over. Those two are so much alike that it hurts. <laughs> and Wallace quickly puts words to my thoughts better than I could. Not just them, I guess. Wallace turns his head to me, a puzzled expression on his face. Before I continue, I place my bottle down on the table, content with my two or three small sips of it. Even if you were doing it to help Millie out, you shouldn't have tried to leave without saying anything. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. 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 Don't think he even considered that. He's only just considered that. <laughs> the message seems to get across. He takes another small sip from his bottle, rationing out the, uh, rationing out the rest of it. When the club dissolved around her, it was a wake-up call. No one was there for the actual writing. It was just one big hangout for a large group of friends. I think that hurt her more than the overnight abandonment. Even the folks she has over there now don't really care about it. Yeah. Tanya joined as a favor. Haley joined as a favor. Heather is Heather. It's not a great club. <laughs> It's really not a good club. 
I figured if I could pop my head in and actually participate, it'd do at least a little to help calm things down. Oh, bless him. You can see exactly where his heart is. Like, he has the best intentions here. But knowing all of the details that he doesn't know makes it so... Honestly, bless him. Like, I love this man. He's great. He's so good. What they're dealing with right now totally eclipses club stuff, though. Yeah, the, the club is, like, not the problem here. Yeah, I know. But little things add up. Yesterday should be enough proof of how important these things are to them. Yeah. He's got as good a point as any. It's obvious to anyone how much Caprice was bothered after how yesterday's meeting went. Caprice would have been hurt by you leaving too, though. Yeah, it's the painful part. Uh, also, I think it's safe to say I probably am going to be running over on my stream today. So, who's ready for a long stream? <laughs> I don't know how long it'll take, but uh, I'm, I don't want to rush through things. But I have told myself that I'm going to get through everything today. So, I don't know how long that's going to take, but I'm just going to keep going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have, like, a tiny five minute break at six o'clock to feed Tiffany and also to just, like, stand up and probably fall over because my legs hurt. But I... I, I want to do all of it. I want to do all of it. <laughs> God, I got another, like, three hours of perfect circle. Marathoning. I'm marathoning. I will do it. <laughs> but I want I want to get through everything. So I'm I don't have any other plans for this evening. So I'm going to keep going. I am going to keep going. But I I am going to take a break at 6. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it's a pretty bad situation to be in all around. I guess I was just tired of doing Lirio one bunga. Oh. No, thank you for the resub. 42 months. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Happy Twofold Tuesday. Welcome. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to... Uh, I keep getting distracted and I wasted like a good hour just talking about random stuff. And now I'm going to have a long stream because I'm, I'm determined to finish things and there's still a lot to do. <laughs> welcome. Oh, well, this is so good though. The bottle meets his lips for one last time before being placed back in its container, finally emptied of its contents. It's hard to help one without the other. Something like that. Yeah. I figured if Caprice got upset, it'd just be mm. a temporary hurdle. She has a lot of people she can fall back on. Now, Millie, though. Mm, that's exactly what I thought before. But... Caprice is not as resilient as you think she is. Everyone has a breaking point, Wallace, please. Well, there's Haley, I suppose. Tanya I'm not too familiar with, and Heather is... Heather. Yeah. So there's, there's Haley, But, like, supportive friends. Tanya is, like, supportive, but in, like, the wrong way. Tanya is like, um, oh yeah, that girl sucks, come drink with me. That's like not what Millie needs at the moment. <laughs> and Heather is Heather. He grimaces just recalling her name. The fact that I can so clearly remember her after just two interactions several months ago probably isn't good for her case either. Yeah, I get it. It always feels like I'm not doing enough myself. We just gotta do what we can with the cards we're dealt. Yeah. Even if it's not much. Wallace grunts as he stands up, grabbing his stash of alcohol in the process. Terrible hand, though. Yeah. One of the worst. Mm -hmm. I join him, taking my lone bottle in my hand as he makes his way to the door. That was the last thing I could think to do. So I guess it's on you now. Burden of young love. Huh? Great, thanks. Everyone in the club can help by being there at the start of the semester. For both of them. Yes. A small smile, a, a slight smile, manages to sneak its way onto his face, even if the beard makes it hard to notice. I'll do what I can then. Have a good night, Olive. Uh, I just had an amazing thought. 
the most random amazing thought. I could get Xander to cosplay as Wallace. And then I could do a two-fault cosplay. Just a random thought that popped into my head. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. See you back in the club room. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm gonna get him like a purple jumper. There we go, all in to help Wallace find his place in the club. Oh, that achievement text is so sweet. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna get Xander a, a purple jumper and a black beanie and scarf for, for no reason. Just be like, this is just felt like giving you a gift. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> Me as Caprice. I think I would cosplay Caprice. If I was cosplaying a twofold character, it probably would be Caprice. Or Haley. Maybe Haley. No, I think Caprice would be fun. <laughs> After he closes the door behind him, I take one more drink from my bottle and pour the rest down the sink. Ah! <sighs> and now we continue. Now we skip through the rest of the game. <laughs> and then the megaphone. Ah! Oh, thank you for the head pod. Hello. Hello, welcome, welcome, how's it going? Thank you for head pads, welcome to Two Fall Tuesday. I'm taking really long doing this, so I'm gonna do a long stream today because I still have lots to do. But welcome, welcome, how's it going? Here we go, okay. Eileen and Allison are the first to say their goodbyes, leaving hand in hand. Wallace is ready soon after, sliding his laptop safely away in his bag. He pats me on the shoulder as he walks past on his way to the door. Hello, going good. No clue what this game is like the art though. Oh, this is twofold. Uh, this, this is a Yuri visual novel game that I've been playing for the past several months as Twofold Tuesdays. And this game is so dear to my heart. I love it so much. I am, I cannot recommend it enough. It is such a heartfelt, beautiful game. Everything about it is just so wonderful, and I'm, I'm, I, I, I can't even like think of how to word things. I just really adore it. It's so good. <laughs> but I'm glad you're doing well too. I'm, I'm really close to the end now. I'm just finishing up like the last little bits that I haven't done. So there's not much left. I've, I've completed both of the routes in the game, but. I, I haven't fully finished it yet. There's still stuff to do. Oh, thank you for the hydrate too. Another hydrate. I think I've got like the tiniest amount of monster in here. Please excuse me while I probably end up in a weird position as I try and get the last out of this can. Ah, there we go. I emptied the can. The end of my monster. Now I have water. Who am I? <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate. Ah. He pats me on the shoulder as he walks past on his way to the door. Looks like we'll be doing this song and dance for a while yet. Mm -hmm. Water? Yeah, I know. Who am I? What is happening? Hydrating with an actual hydration product? <laughs> what has happened? Looking after myself? Heaven forbid. See you there once the bell house meetings start up? Yeah. Naturally. Ever a man of few words, but those were the only ones I needed to hear. We're both content to leave the conversation there, so I give him a half-hearted wave as he goes to make his exit. Hey, Wallace. Oh, hi. When did you enter this alternate reality? Can you go back? Don't worry, it's going to be monster again tomorrow. It's a temporary measure. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and he stops, shoulders shooting up ever so slightly before slumping down again. 
With all the reluctance in the world, he turns back to face Caprice. Thanks for sticking around. Oh, oh bless. He relaxes at her harmless gratitude. Of course. Yay. He turns to face the door again. And? Yeah. And he turns back. Thanks for watching over Millie the entire time, too. It means more than you know. Yeah, she knew the whole time. She she knew. I feel like he probably thought he was being so sneaky as a double agent. And Caprice knew the whole time. <laughs> Another elongated silence, though I'm not quite sure if it's just Wallace being Wallace or if he's found himself at a loss for words. Things stay quiet just long enough to start feeling awkward before he eventually finds a response. It's kind of fun being stuck in between you two, even if it ends up taking years off my life. I'm sure Olive would agree. Yeah. Way to put me on the spot. Well... I'm not sure if fun is the right word for it. Yeah, I think it's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, to each their own, I suppose. And besides, they aren't in the middle of anything. Ollie is firmly right here beside me, thank you very much. Yeah, Caprice is just like, you're not allowed to be on the fence, I'm pulling you over to my side. <laughs> she grabs my hand to emphasize her point. I guess they are. With a small smile, he spins around to face the door one last time. Not long afterward... Oh, yeah, I think this is the same. Yeah, we skip now. Ha ha ha! Success! We did it! We did it! We bit, did both of the friendship paths in um, three and a half hours. Which, um, it definitely shouldn't take three and a half hours to do those. But don't worry about it. But yeah, that means it's perfect circle time. It's perfect circle time! I'm ready. I'm so ready. I'm gonna set a little alarm on my phone for six o'clock to, to make sure I remember to feed Tiffany so I can have like a little break if I need it but no not for 6am that not not 6am there we go here we go okay everyone who says I'm ready for perfect circle is never ready I, I know I'm not going to be ready I fully realize I'm probably not going to be ready for this like if the base game is anything to go off i'm i'm probably going to cry multiple times but i'm very excited i'm excited to start right here we go here's the start button perfect circle start what is perfect circle it's something that unlocked after i completed both of the routes and i think it's a prequel and that's all i know <laughs> We're about to find out what is Perfect Circle. It's this. <gasps> It'll take a while. Start Perfect Circle for the first time. I know what the, the finishing achievement's gonna be called. <laughs> oh, well, good luck. You're gonna head to bed. Oh, I hope you sleep well. Thank you for stopping in. I'm glad you, you managed to make it. I hope the, the kitchen cleaning went well. But thank you for stopping in. Perfect circles of sadness. No, no spoilies. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> Although I kind of always expect a little bit of emotional devastation. Here we go. Oh, there's content warnings. Ooh. Several years ago, another story was written. Content warnings can be found by clicking exclamation point on the top bar. Navigate by clicking the arrows on the top bar or using your arrow keys. Okay, yeah. Perfect Circle contains potentially uncomfortable content. Please read at your own pace. Click to reveal explicit warnings for the current scene. Example content warning. Explicit text detailing the extent of the content, visual and or textual. Oh, so do each of the content warnings have, like, a vague one and then a detail one? Like, if you click through it? 
Because if that's the case, I really like that because I kind of want to click the content warning so that people who are watching are aware, but I don't want like the explicit details. I, I don't want to know exactly what's going to happen, but I, I do think it's probably good to give at least a light content warning. That's a really good way of doing that. I like that. Because it might be that someone is okay with something in some scenarios, but then a similar thing is like a big hard limit. Like I know a friend of mine where it's like, for them, it's like the content warning is like, if there's something around suicide, for example, then it's okay sometimes with warnings, but if it's like a specific thing in that category, then that's like a hard limit of no, never. So I I like that that is a, a thing there. Yeah, uh, all the perfect circle scenes are also unlocked from the start, so people can skip over them if they aren't equipped for the current scene's contents. I love that. That's really good. That's really good. I really love that. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to be broken. Here we go. I am going to do the content warnings. I'm generally the kind of person where I'm okay with basically anything in fictional media when I'm like in the right headspace for it. So I don't tend to need content warnings, but because I'm streaming it and because there's like people watching, I want to make sure that that is shown, like at least the vague ones, so that people can be aware going into it of what's going to happen. But yeah, oh, going to lurk because you know you're not ready for this again. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm guessing you probably saw it on a... Was it? I, th I think Nue streamed this, didn't they? I think Nue streamed this. It would probably be through their stream, I guess. But yeah, that is, that is completely fine. If it's like heavy emotional stuff, you do not have to worry about having to lurk. Like, I, I'm completely fine with that. I fully understand. But uh, thank you for being here either way, though. I'm, I appreciate it. All right. Am I ready to start? I don't think so. I don't think I am. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate. Yeah, let's have some water. I find it so difficult to just drink water because it it's just so nothing. -y. I need to get some more squash in. I need to get some more cordial so that I can actually have water but like add a bit of flavor to it so it's easier to drink. Oh, thank you for the posture check as well and the head pad. Okay, big stretch. I'm ready. Yeah, always prefer content warnings heads up too because it just gets your brain already processing stuff. No, I, I fully agree too. Like, something like appearing out of nowhere can be way harder to deal with than something that you're like pre-warned about. Like, if, if you know that something's going to come, you can like mentally prepare yourself a bit as opposed to it just being there out of nowhere. Right, here we go. Perfect circle <laughs> some time ago. I'm so after hours working hard is good and all but make sure you take care of yourself too okay ah I see I have a feeling I might know what this will be <laughs> here we go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh I'm so excited to learn more about August Ah. August ends her day with a tired sigh, flipping the sign on the door of the diner from open to closed. The Bell House seems like an entirely different restaurant after hours. She'd been here countless times as a customer, but never once experienced the peace and quiet of the place when the lights were dimmed and the last customer had long since left. She sits down at the front counter, grateful for her first chance to rest in hours. After an entire day of running back and forth, taking orders, delivering food and cleaning tables, August feels both her muscles and mind aching. She reaches into her apron's front pocket and pulls out a wadded pile of bills, the fruits of her labor. 
She does her best to straighten them up as she counts the day's wages, but she's so exhausted that she half-heartedly piles them up as she goes. Five, eight, nine, ten, fifteen... She almost loses count when a white takeaway box and to-go cup unexpect unexpectedly drop in front of her. Ariel smiles warmly when August looks at her, taking a seat beside her. Hey, uh, August. Sorry about the crazy first day. Oh, oh my goodness, her first day. <gasps> I, I don't normally condone trial by fire, but well, everything will seem easy after this, right? Yeah. Ah, that's true. To be honest, I wasn't sure if I could survive another week of this. Goodness, no, dear. <laughs> I'd quit if we had a whole week of nights like these. How'd you do? Uh, uh, all right, I think. The table numbers gave me trouble at first, but I think I've got it now. Uh, I love this. I also love how you can really see the family resemblance. Like, the olive in young August is... I love it. <laughs> That's great. I knew you'd get the hang of it in no time. Yeah. Ariel nods to the to-go boxes in front of her. This is yours. Oh. Remember, you'll always have a hot meal here, even if you're not working. Oh, bless. I I love this. I love her. What a, what a great family business. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Of course. I'm going to finish up cleaning up the kitchen, but you take your time. Let me know if you need anything, okay? August nods as Ariel stands up and disappears into the kitchen. She peeks into the to-go box, her favorite meal within, uh, her, fa her favorite meal within, obviously fresh out of the kitchen. She feels a light flutter in her stomach, a feeling she's only just started to get used to. <laughs> she says another thank you to the owner, this time for the little one. August has known about her pregnancy for a month now. Since then, she started making arrangements to the best of her ability. She's not rich, nor does she have her parents to rely on. Another, And her boyfriend, as great as he has been for the years they've been together since high school, is still only a boyfriend. So, August dropped out of college last week. Her textbooks, still in pristine condition, are sitting in a corner of her kitchen. She would go back soon, she promised to herself. Ah. Ah. <laughs> for now, there was something, someone, infinitely more important to prepare for. August puts a hand on her stomach. The fluttering begins again. <laughs> yeah, not the college dropout to raise a child. I know. I know, and that's... That must be why she is just so supportive of Olive getting through college, too. Like, it's... Mm. The fluttering begins again. August smiles to herself. This is new for her and a little scary. But more than anything, she feels a love in her heart that she wants to nurture and protect. She dons her coat and hat once she's done eating, and bids farewell to Ariel. The only other person who knows about her pregnancy, and the one who has offered her this job with a generous wage to help out. Oh, oh August. Ah. Working so hard. Next, two halves. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, content warnings, another pregnancy one. <sighs> the first time your dad cooked something for me, he accidentally set off the fire alarm. I'll tell you a secret, he sneaks broccoli into everything. He says it's cheating your body into eating vegetables. Okay, alright. Oh, no, I meant to click read. Read. Here we go. What about something like... Melanie? Oh, they're thinking of names! Ah! 
Hmm, maybe... I do like M names. How about Nilly? <laughs> Not Melody. <laughs> no, there's already a Melody. Can't be that one. Adelaide gives Charlie a mischievous grin, and Mike chuckles a little from the other side of the kitchen. The smell of roasted vegetables and chicken fills the home. Ah. Can you go back to the trigger warning after you finish reading the scenes? Oh, I guess I could do that. Yeah, I'll like extend it out after that. That's probably, yeah, that's probably a good thing to, to look at as well. Ah. <laughs> okay. How about Marigold? Or Madeline? I think something cute would be good. Those are cute, though. That's a cute. She's definitely gonna be a cutie. I mean, look at her parents. So true. Adelaide laughs as Charlie leans over, speaking close to her belly. When are you becoming cutie? Your poor mama can barely walk, you know. <laughs> oh, is she kicking? Oh, this, this art is so adorable. This is so cute. With a clatter, Mike drops whatever he was washing and rushes over as Adelaide's laughter stops abruptly and she places a careful hand on her stomach. Oh, oh gosh. Adelaide, deep breaths. Is it time? Are you okay? Charlie, can you start the car? No, no, wait, it's not that. She's just, oh, <laughs> she's kicking a lot. Charlie and Mike heave a huge sigh of relief in unison. Mike stays by his wife's side, holding her hand. You sure? Do you want me to call the nurses again, just in case? I'm okay, love. I mean it. She's just active at dinner time, you know that. I love how everyone's so worried. <laughs> I can't imagine being that far along. <laughs> My feet are already sore and I'm just a couple of months in. <laughs> well, you are pretty tiny. Your stomach will probably be the size of you by June. I'll probably have to roll to the hospital. <laughs> they all laugh together now. The previous scare already faded away. There are many of these now that Adelaide's due date is in just a couple weeks. Mike stands up just as the timer set on the stove begins beeping. Dinner's ready. <laughs> oh, I love this. I, I, I'm, I'm so devastated, but I love this. I love it so much. Oh, I love that she's got Millie's voice. He moves to the stove and begins fussing over the food within. Charlie smiles and leans over the table, speaking in a hushed voice. So... How's he handling it? Actually, this is a good day. I sighed a little bit too loudly yesterday, and he was already grabbing the to-go bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love that. Intentionally cast them to have the same VAs to emphasize immediately how close they are. It works so perfectly. It works like... It's like the most spot-on decision. It's, it's so good. I love it. <laughs> He's always been a worrywart. Oh, Mike. You know he packed two go bags? <sighs> one's in the car and one's in our room. The poor nurses have fielded 50 calls in the past three days alone. Oh, bless him. Oh, he's so sweet. Adelaide smiles warmly and nods. Mike returns to the table, the big ceramic platter in his mitted hands steaming. I followed the recipe, but... Uh, I'm not sure if the vegetables are cooked, but they started burning, so... <laughs> They're probably cooked then. He sets the dish in the middle of the table, slipping off his gloves and tossing them onto the counter behind him. He avoids eye contact with both Charlie and Adelaide all the while, sheepishly staring down at the food. It looks great, Mike. Oh, look! This is so pretty! I love this. 
I love how it's like nice scenes for now and then it's just gonna be emotional devastation. <laughs> He sits at the table next to Adelaide, and the three take a minute to serve their plates. It's a familiar scene by now. Charlie's spot at the table had been there before Mike's, uh, before Mike's, and it was because of her that she and Adelaide had met Mike years ago. Ah. Uh, to this day, Adelaide teases Charlie over her oh, over her ability to rear-end a parked vehicle. Oh, I see. That's what a way to meet someone. As the dinner nears its end, the three stay seated, chatting small matters over sparkling waters and picking at their plates. Adelaide keeps glancing at Charlie, trying to hide a look that her friend knows only as wants to say something. Charlie lasts about three seconds before finally pressing the matter. Aid, what's up? It's just, you know. Mm -hmm. She pushes some vegetables on her plate around, biting her lip as she seems to revise her next sentence in her head. She looks at Mike for help. He takes a moment to fold over a napkin on the table. We wanted to offer you a room here, if you want. Oh, bless. What? Adelaide elbows Mike with a stern, but warm, look. He gives her a bewildered stare in return as she shakes her head in exasperation. I love you so much, Charlie. Aww. You know that, right? Oh, family. Mike loves you too. You're always going to be our family. Adelaide reaches out and grabs her friend's hands. You're so important to me. I hope you know you're always welcome in our home, no matter what. And newborns are tough, you know? You'll need time off work to rest and recover and... Well, everything. Bless. I already asked for a split leave at the shop. I'll stay here with Adelaide for a month, and then I have another month to use down the line if you need anything. I'm already crying. <laughs> oh, you can see how much they care about each other. I'm <laughs> you could stay with us, and if anything happens, we'll both be here for you. Charlie feels a lump rise in her throat, looking at her earnest expression. She looks down at their hands locked together on the table. She closes her eyes and takes a slow breath. Gently... She squeezes Adelaide's hands before releasing them. She smiles at her friends before her. I love you too, but I... I can't. I bet she doesn't want to intrude on them. Mike, you <laughs> need to stay with Adelaide for as long as you can take time off. <laughs> and Adelaide, you need to rest too. Spend time with your little girl and your husband. Don't go worrying about me like always. Oh. I... I have to do this on my own. I need to. Mm -hmm. Charlie... I have to prove to myself that I can do this on my own. You can, Charlie. But you don't have to. Oh. The house falls silent. Adelaide fidgets with her braid, the hundred objections spinning around in her head dissolving whenever she looks at Charlie's soft and determined eyes. Are you sure? I am. Then... Okay. Just one thing, please. Mm -hmm. Charlie nods. Adelaide reaches out her hands again to her. When Charlie takes her hands, Adelaide gestures to Mike. He puts his hands in the embrace, too. You're not alone. Always remember that, okay? If you need anything, I mean anything, let us know. I don't care if it's three in the morning and you just want to come over and crash for an hour so you can nap. We're here for you. I love this family. Charlie looks between Mike and Adelaide. Their hands hold her own firmly. 
she knows without a doubt in her mind that Adelaide means every word. The rainbow outlines. Love it. The home is quiet, yet the overflow of love and understanding between the three seated at the kitchen table fills the silence. Millie? Huh. That's a pretty decent name, yeah. Alright, let's have a look. Content warnings. Pregnancy. Yep, August is pregnant but not visually showing. Text refers uh, refers refers to fluttering sensation. And then this one, pregnancy again. Charlie and Adelaide are pregnant. Adelaide is visibly showing. Contains dialogue about sensations of kicking. I think this is such a great way to do the content warnings. I love that. Right, what's the next one gonna be? Little babies. I'll never guess what scene three's warning is. It's. It, I don't think it's gonna be pregnancy. <gasps> Whoa. I can't believe it. I can imagine what it's gonna say as well. It's gonna be like, a, it refers to um, someone giving birth and having a baby. <laughs> mm. The flower of February. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this, let's go, let's read it. It's okay, little Millie. Look what I have here. It's from Grandpa Cal. Oh my god. Adelaide bounces the tiny baby in her arms, who squirms and fusses and wrinkles her face in response. She shakes the cloth kitten near Millie's face until its little dance catches her attention. There. There's the caprice. <laughs> and there's the Millie. Yum. The baby reaches for the toy and grips it tightly with both hands. She stares at its face with huge eyes, and after a couple moments, erupts into delighted giggles. Yep, yeah, uh, Millie sure did say, mm. I love it. Hey, should I do my baby impression? Would this be the right time to do my baby impression? I feel like people are going to say the right time to do my baby impression is never. But I'm not going to listen to them. Anyway, uh, I got a baby in my room. What is this? Oh, hello. Who are you? <laughs> no, that kind of went terrifying at the end there. Maybe not the laugh. I can do the cry, though. I can do a, a fairly realistic baby cry. <laughs> Like, I call it my party trick, but I think if I ever did that at a party, everybody would leave. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, baby. Baby. Charlie looks on tenderly, rubbing her own growing belly. Her dad, Cal, sits in a nearby chair with a confident display of pride that his gift was so gleefully accepted. I don't know much about Cal, huh? I love that they stuck with like a C name theme. Like we both have C names. Let's, let's give her a name beginning with C as well. Oh my gosh, I can't take her. How is she so cute? Oh no, it's grandfather. Grandfather, I, I guess boyfriend is possibly out of the picture then. I see, I see. Okay, yeah, no, it makes sense. <laughs> she is so cute though. Not gonna lie, you would be weirded out if I did it real life. Yeah, it, I feel like it's even worse in real life. Because it's it's just probably not a noise an adult should be able to make. But it's very funny when people actually think that it's like, a, they're just like, hey, check out the baby sound. <laughs> You're laughing so much when Theo submitted the CD and the clerks had orange on their sweaters. I love it. It's great! I also love that they have the matching sweaters too. I think that is so cute. It's so sweet. I love it. She takes after her mom. <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> the white festive lights decorating the small living room fill it with a warm glow. A modest amount of small wrapped gifts sit under the tree in the corner of the room. Mike reaches under the tree and grabs another present at random. 
with a cursory glance at the name, he passes it over to Charlie. And this is from us. It couldn't be from anyone else, really. Charlie raises her eyebrows and turns over the small, bright red cube in her hands. Cube? The red cube? <laughs> she gives it a little shake, turning her head to hear the contents within. Cal smirks a little and shakes his head. What? It's good luck, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. She smiles warmly and returns to her dad's sigh, unwrapping the present as she hums to herself. Oh. That's so pretty. Oh. Oh, I love that. This is beautiful. That's so pretty. I know you're not too into jewelry, but I couldn't resist. Tell her about the flower, Mike. Uh... It's a violet. <laughs> Great, thanks. <laughs> it's the flower for February. Oh, that's so cute. You're due the 8th, right? We thought it'd be a pretty safe bet. Don't worry, we got you a lot of diapers and clothes, too. It's just... I wanted to buy something Aww. for you. And don't feel like you have to wear it. It just... She's gonna wear it. Adelaide, no, no. Aww. I love it. I really do. Thank you so much. Charlie fiddles with the latch, trying to get the clasp on the impossibly tiny loop. Cal watches for just a moment before kneeling down and placing his hands over hers. Her mother always loved jewelry like this, but she could never get the latch either. <laughs> He laughs a little to himself. Charlie and her dad hadn't spoken much in the last few years. Not until recently. It's been slow and uneasy. Charlie didn't know how to tell him she was expecting, and her dad had never been the emotional type. But they're getting there. As Charlie looks at the bracelet on her wrist, her growing belly, and her dad's soft expression, she feels a comfort she didn't realize she's been missing. Adelaide bounces the baby in her arms as little Millie starts to lose interest in the doll, shushing her softly. Shush, shush. It's okay. Oh, why don't you let me hold her for a bit? Take a rest. Hey, Millie. Ah. How's it going? You're the baby, the little baby. You know, your mom is really amazing. She loves you so much, too. She's just the best person and working so hard, and, and you are, too. I love how Millie was crying. Baby Millie was crying. And now Charlie started crying, and baby Millie's like, eh? <laughs> oh. oh, no, Charlie. Hey. Don't worry, it's just the pregnancy hormones. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Hormones. Yeah. I love all of you so much. Oh. Oh, you softie. You sure you're okay? Do you want a glass of water? Mm. Want me to take her? No, no. I'm really okay. I'm just... happy. She wants to expand on it, but she knows she'll just cry more if she tries. Charlie looks down at Millie with blurry eyes, letting her grab her fingers with her little hands. Oh, it's so tiny. In just a few months, her family will grow by one more. I can't wait for you to meet Caprice, Millie. Yes. I'm sure you'll be best friends. Charlie is pregnant and visibly showing. There are no descriptions of pregnancy symptoms. Except for maybe hormones. Hormonal. <laughs> right. Next one. Oh, raised by the sea. 
Make lots of art. Save as much of it as you can and never lose that spark of yours to create. Art, writing, it doesn't matter as long as it's your voice. No warnings here, just be happy. Nice. It's nice. I'm waiting for the, 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 the more warnings. <laughs> right, anyway, what time is it? It is five to six now. So that's probably a good time for me to very quickly take a five minute break. Leave it on this like really nice happy scene. Like we get to see the pretty lovely moment here. We got the relaxing music in the background. I will just, hold on, where's my sign? There's my sign. I'll stick this up. I will be back in five minutes. I'm gonna go feed Tiffany. And also grab myself another drink, maybe, as well. And just stand up. But uh, I will be right back. And then I will return, because I'm, 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 I'm getting through all of this. I'm doing all of this. I don't care how long it takes me. I'm doing all of it. <laughs> Tiffany mentioned, yes. The Tiffy must be fed. It's her dinner time at six. So she's going to be really mad if I don't feed her on time. So I shall do that. I might grab myself a snack, too, actually. Anyway, oh, I just had a thought of something I can do. Give me a second, where did I? Will this work? I'm gonna try something just to make it more interesting while I'm BRBing, let's see. Okay, yeah, it does work. It does work, there we go. You have entertainment while I go grab a drink and stuff. <laughs> Look at it go. Right, okay, be right back.
Hello. I have returned. I think that was less than a five minute break. But uh, anyway, the Tiffy has been fed and she was waiting right outside my door. She was sat outside the door and as soon as I opened it, she just started screaming at me. <laughs> so yeah, she wanted her dinner, but she's been fed now. And I return. Goodbye, worm. I don't know if it hit the corner or not, but it's gone now, so. There we go, time to return. Returning to perfect circle and we have raised by the sea. Are we going to learn why Caprice loves ocean stuff so much? I guess we may. Also, Horus Heretic, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. The worm is gone. I'm so sorry. She's always here somewhere, though. Don't worry about it. The, the screensaver will be back. But thank you for following. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to um, happy moments before emotional devastation, I think. <laughs> Right, here we go. Raised by the sea. Hold on, I need to move my chair properly. There we go. Okay, raised by the sea. Caprice is coloring. The big pink crayon in her hand moves with conviction, filling the paper with pink scribbles and pink circles and pink lines. Thank you for the hydrate. I have some water. Water for Caprice with the ocean. <laughs> I guess it makes sense that way. She does like water. <laughs> but thank you for the hydrate. It's great. She glances at the guy next to her. He's coloring quietly too. And he smiles down at Caprice and ruffles her hair. He's nice. But he's not mom, so Caprice keeps coloring, passing time. She already saw all her favorite fish today, so there's nothing else to do. Caprice! <gasps> there she is! Mom, look! <gasps> Did you draw flowers? Oh, how wonderful, honey. Aww. We'll have to frame this when we get home. I love that she's wearing the bracelet. Like, I, I knew she'd wear the bracelet, but I love it. Yes! She did it! Caprice is so happy to see her mom. She better make this picture even better if it's going to be framed. Thanks again for watching her, Sam. Ah, don't worry about it. She's the best. It's true, she is. Still, please let me get you a coffee or something to say thanks. I'm lucky enough to finally get a turn hanging out <laughs> with her. Really, no worries. Is your chore still going on? How about you go grab lunch with Cappy here? Cappy! I'll finish it for you. Really? Are you sure? I'm already walking yeah. away. Have fun, you two. Oh, he's great. Mom sighs and waves goodbye to Sam. She seems tired. Caprice proudly rolls up her drawing and hops off her chair. Was Sam nice? Yeah, he stinks at coloring. <laughs> I saw. You'll have to teach him. I'll try... This is so cute. Caprice doubted he could ever learn. So, what do you want to eat? Mac and cheese! Yeah. Again? Again! <laughs> okay, mac and cheese it is. She's probably relieved it's something easy. Like, if that's what you want to eat all the time, then sure. Mac and cheese time. Caprice smiles. She loves when they can eat lunch together. They go to Caprice's favorite place. The inside is bright and decorated, and there's a million things to look at. Most importantly, Mom always gets her a milkshake here after lunch. <gasps> Ooh, the little sip, the little sip. I love that. Caprice looks at all the walls while her mom counts the paper to pay for the meal. Is it good? It's yummy. Mm-hmm. Are you hungry, Mom? No, I'm okay. You better eat up, though, <laughs> or I might just steal that milkshake anyway. Ah, this is so cute. <gasps> Drink it fast. 
Caprice pretends to hide the milkshake, but really, she always leaves some extra for mom. <sighs> Do you have fun at the aquarium, Caprice? I like the otters and the big tank with all the fish. Oh. Caprice wonders why her mom asks her questions like this so much. She always looks so worried when she does too. Her actual favorite thing about the aquarium is when her mom tells her all about the fish, even if she's heard it all a million times. Her mom gets busy though, so they can't do it often. I wish I could walk around with you though. Oh. Oh, you know that Charlie's feeling guilty about not being able to like spend time with her and like probably not having like childcare options, so she has to bring Caprice to the aquarium. But she loves it, it's okay. Uh-oh, mom looks a little sad again. But the other people are really nice too, so it's okay. Mm. Her mom smiles but looks away. Caprice puts her milkshake back on the table, then unfurls the drawing in her pocket. Her secret weapon to cheer her up. Mom, can you finish it for me? Oh. Oh. Are you all done? Oh. Yep. Mm hmm. Okay, so what do you want to title it? Big Blue! <gasps> That's a good title. It's modeled after her favorite tank in the aquarium. It's the biggest one with the most fish in it. She even drew the pink rocks on the bottom. Her mom writes Big Blue nice and pretty on the back of the drawing and puts the date. She passes it back to Caprice to sign, and she does so with a strong swoop of her pencil. That's so good! Done! Yeah! You did a good job, Caprice. Good job. Will you hold on to it for me until we get home? Okay. Are you done eating? Yep. Thank you, Mom. I love you. Oh. I love you too, honey. Doing their best. Let's head back now, okay? They're just doing their best. Oh. Okay, here we go. Next one. <laughs> Page 53. There will be good days and bad days. Hold the good days close and cherish each and every sunrise. Content warnings for this one. Yeah. Figured... That would probably be the case. Huh. <laughs> How'd that get there? Probably just a tie, but yeah, it's, it's fine. Nothing to worry about. I'm sure it's fine. Here's the main content warning. Please be aware, everybody. I, I think I know what's, what's in store here. Huh. Okay, here we go. Oh... Look at the little kitty on the dress, too. Millie bounds into her home, her backpack flopping up and down on her shoulders. Spring break, she thinks to herself, nearly tripping as she kicks off her shoes. I'm home. Welcome home. I'm in the kitchen. I'm making some fruit bowls. Go wash up, okay? Hey, where's mom? In the reading room, I think. Up, up, and up the stairs, to wash up and then get her bags packed. But first... Mom, hi! Hi! <laughs> hi. <sighs> oh, Millie, welcome home. How was school? Great, it's spring break now. Hmm... <sighs> So I heard. Yeah, first thing I saw immediately, just... <sighs> Millie glances at the book in her mom's hands. She recognizes the cover. It's floated around their house for a few weeks. Every once in a while, its bright cover opened and a new edition scrawled into the pages. Compared to all her other journals, this one was definitely the nicest. But her mom, who usually filled a page or more a day, 
was going through this one at a glacial pace. Her mom, possibly noticing Millie's eyes trailing to the cover of the book, clears her throat and rubs the top of Millie's head. Anyway, Millie, are you excited? I already spoke to Charlie. She said she'll be by in a couple hours to pick you up. I am. Yeah. Millie's been lucky and lucky enough to be able to have a sleepover at Caprice's a few times a month, and tonight is their first full weekend sleepover. Mom looks back down at the book in her hands for a moment. I've been writing this book for you, you know? I just wasn't sure when the right time would be to share it with you. Mm. But I think there is no right time. Yeah. Mom smiles the way she smiles when she didn't really want to smile. Millie looks at the back cover of the book. Do you want to read it together? Oh. <laughs> you can even see as well. Look how look how frail she looks. Like when you compare it to the earlier images of her in, in the other stories, you can see. She looks so frail. I'm <laughs> With an uncertain nod, Millie curls up on the ground, wrapping herself up in her soft blanket. Her mom gingerly reaches down to sit as well, pressing her back against the couch and adjusting the pillows. It's as close as they can get to a pillow fort nowadays, but just as cozy. Millie lays with her head snuggled up under her mom's arm and her mom flips open to the first page of her homemade story. To those I love. Mom hesitates before turning the page. The pages within are dedicated to you, my family, who I will love forever after. A knock on the door stops them at the second page. Hey, loves. Wanna... What a time for a fruit bowl. <laughs> Dad begins his words smiling, but his voice and mood falters when he spots the two of them on the floor. Everything okay? Hmm. Yeah, everything's fine. I was just about to read this. Why don't you join us? No. Oh. Whew. He stays quiet, placing the fruit balls down. He steps over to where Millie and her mom are seated, hands in pockets. Adelaide, can we talk about this? Mm. Honey. Let's not do this now. Can we find something else to read? Mike, we have to talk about it sometime. I already spoke to Charlie and... But we don't need to do it now. We're fine. It's a simple procedure. And it won't be the last. Millie's old enough now. The more we dance around it, the harder it'll be for her. Oh boy. Millie watches her mom grab her dad's hand and squeeze it tightly. They look at each other for just a moment, and Millie shifts a little in the uncomfortable atmosphere. <sighs> Listen, honey... I need to do this while I still have the courage. Mm -hmm. After we read it, we can talk as a family, okay? Okay. No, oh, she's so worried now. I, I would also be worried after a conversation like that. Oh my goodness. Millie nods because she feels like she has to. Her dad sits on the other side of her, taking her hand in his and putting his arm around the both of them. The family sits together in the sunset-lit room, snuggled up on the floor against the couch, as Adelaide begins reading a sad story. To Mike, my one and only love. My greatest wish has always been to share our lives together. Millie sits listening, her heart heavy. Her mom continues reading, page after page, 
in a soft voice. And failing that, I wish you find happiness. Continue living and know I'm always beside you, rooting for you. Millie, my little one, please never stop reaching for the stars. You deserve to shine. She continues, pulling Millie a bit closer, reading out her final wishes, asking those around her to find happiness, to dare to search for it. Millie pulls her mom closer too. Being your mom has been my life's greatest gift, and I will always love you. Even when I can't be here, I hope you know your mom is cheering you on. Millie glances up at her. She's staring at the back cover, a difficult expression adorning her face. Oh. She's crying. Millie tries to make sense of the last few months, as she does usually. Millie wonders if her mom is going to be okay. Millie doesn't understand it, but... A part of her thinks she won't be. Millie thinks her mom must be dying. Millie reaches up to dry her mom's tears, unaware of her own beginning to pull up. To her side, her dad is silent, but holding the three of them even tighter now. I love you both so, so much. We love you too. We still have so much time, so let's make the most of it, okay? We'll fill this book up together, Millie. I'll write you stories and, and answer any questions you ask me, so you'll always have a bit of me by your side. Millie tries to say something, but nothing comes out. More tears roll down her cheeks. Her mom wipes her face. Let's keep smiling, okay? Okay. Millie nods hard against her parents' supporting shoulders. I love you, Mom. She feels her dad kiss her on the top of her head. The day passes quietly, filled with more small moments of love. The three eat fruit bowls together and laugh about nothing in particular. Millie sits with her parents as they explain what cancer is. Her mom pulls Millie in a tight hug after they finish packing her sleepover bag. When Charlie arrives to pick her up, Charlie hugs all three of them too. Caprice volunteers to bring Millie's things into the car. They promise to have fun together. Millie gives her mom another bigger hug, the kind where she uses all her strength and wishes her good luck at the hospital. The story they read at the back of her mind, Millie looks outside the car window as they drive to Caprice's house. She'll do her best to make sure her mom can keep smiling too. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. I wondered if it, it might be. I was right. <laughs> uh. Well. <laughs> This scene breaks me too. <laughs> wow. <Well. sighs> wow. <sighs> yeah, but at least I'm not the only one crying. <laughs> Just make everyone else cry as well. <laughs> crying at work again. No problem. Huh. <sighs> Wow. Whew. Yeah. Yeah, I had a feeling it might have been something like that, like from 
everything I like picked up in the game. And then that confirms it. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Thank you for that, but thank you. Right, what are we what are we seeing next? What do we got next? Autumn woes. Whew. Okay. Okay, great. Good. Good, great, wonderful. <laughs> hmm. All right. <sighs> okay. Right, I don't think this one will hit me as hard as the last one, but it's there is the the content warning. I think I can guess how the expanded one will look, but Autumn Woes. Page 75, making hard decisions. Surround yourself with love. It's a lot easier to make the right choice for yourself if you have support. Mm. Mm. I must protect August. <sighs> Olive pushes their face deeper in their scarf. They walk slow to stay next to their mom, who doesn't seem to mind the cold as much. Oh, I hate fall. Wait until you hear about winter. <laughs> Olive sighs dramatically. The leaves cover the ground and make it impossible to spot the places where the sidewalk is broken, occasionally tripping them. The wind is way too cold and fast. Ah, oh, the scenes were originally in a different order, but you moved this one to here to give us a small break after the last scene. Probably a good shout. Probably a good shout, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> the wind is way too cold and fast. The colors on the trees are way less colorful in real life than the books. They're just yellow and brown and dead. Not to mention the days get shorter, so the sun is already disappearing. It's getting colder by the minute. Olive really hates fall. We're almost there. Olive bet they still had long to go. As the streetlights come on, Olive reaches up to hold their mom's hand. They're going to Auntie Ari's restaurant. They go there for dinner a lot, especially on days like these when mom and dad fight. Why don't you tell me about your day at school? It was fine, I guess. Did you make any new friends? No. <laughs> Sadness there. Their mom squeezes their hands supportively. I'm sure you will soon. Be positive. You're a great kid, Ollie. Ollie doesn't really want to talk about it. August and little Olive. Come in, come in. Auntie Ari waves from the back of the restaurant. Olive waves back while their mom clearly cl quickly clears off their usual table. Hey, you two. I had to get out of the house again. Yeah. yeah. You know how he is. Oh, boy. Dad got mad about the laundry. Olive, please. That's not nice. But it's true. Olive rolls their eyes and pretends to look over the kid's menu. Mom is too nice. Want me to teach him a lesson? Yes. <laughs> We're fine. He's just tired. That's all. Yeah, he's just tired. He's just had a bad day. It was my fault, really. I'm... <laughs> Auntie Ari exchanges a look with Olive, who shrugs. She sighs, places a hand on Mom's, and squeezes it. Are you still dropping Olive off tomorrow? You have your exams soon, right? Hmm. Ah, right. Actually, I think I'll be okay, so I'll come by for my shift instead. Actually, uh, he didn't like it when I studied, so I, I stopped studying. You know, it was just... It's not the right thing to do. 
Olive knows mom doesn't really have exams. Every time she says she's going to study, she opens a book for a little bit, then walks away and starts cleaning or something. She must have her reasons, though, so Olive doesn't say anything when Auntie Ari protests. August, you need to study. How many classes did you take this semester? Three? Oh, this is horrible. This is... Mm. August deserves so much better. Ja, uh, just the one, actually. Uh, Even more reason. They go back and forth for a while. While I'm at it, are you okay, Olive? They're fine, I'm sure. I guess. Mm. Olive wilts under, uh, under Auntie Ari's eyes. They didn't really want to get into the middle of it. Look, August, if you need the shift, of course you can come. Thank you. But please, take me up on my offer to cover it anyway. Why don't you take them out for a fun day? Oh, bless you. She's so lovely. They're too gloomy for a kid their age. <laughs> Auntie Ari pats Olive's head and then gets up to take care of other tables. Do you want to go out tomorrow, honey? <laughs> the smile. Protect the smile. I'm... <sighs> Use your work, Mom. Mm. I don't really need to. We'll be fine this month. Are you sure? You really are too serious for your age. Mm. Had to grow up way too fast. It's, uh, uh. Come on, we'll have fun. Mm. Mom pulls out a nearby newspaper. She flips through the pages. Look, there's going to be a fun event at the zoo tomorrow. Why don't we go? <laughs> Olive tries not to look excited. That would be fun. But they've had to cancel plans so many times before. They're gonna have a partnership with the aquarium and do a tour? Ooh. As their mom goes on, Olive shifts a little closer to look at the article despite themselves. She angles the article so Olive can see and continues reading. It's only a couple moments before Olive scoots up closer to her to listen. Auntie Ari doesn't say anything when she comes by with the food, as Olive chimes in on which of the events they'd like to visit. They sit together and let their food go cold, excitedly chatting about tomorrow. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, very glad it doesn't go into too much detail there, but you you can you get the you get the the, the, the gist of things. It's I can imagine. All right. All right. Okay, unbroken, it gets better. Why don't you go ask them to play? Olive sits on the swing, their legs half-hearted kicks, the only thing pushing them at all. Their mom gestures to the two girls playing across the park, tilting her, her head towards them all the while. Goodness. It's okay. Hmm. I don't really want to. I think you're a liar. Oh, don't <laughs> give me that, sweetie. What's wrong? If they wanted to play with me, they'd ask. Why don't you ask? I'll just bother them. No. No, they really did grow up too fast. Like, the, these are not the the thoughts that a, a child of this age should be having. Oh, this is so sad. They really are too serious for a child of that age. Bless them, like... Uh, Honey... They've had to grow up fast, and I hate that. <sighs> too soon. Grow up too soon, like, they... 
they deserve to have a child for it. <laughs> it's not like that, Ollie. You have to put yourself out there. Yeah. On cue, the shorter of the two girls suddenly points at the two on the swings, speaking loudly to her mom. When her mom nods, she and the other girl dash over. Who wanna play obstacle course? Look at the babies. The babies. Oh, look at them. Um. Okay. Awesome! Yeah. I'm Caprice, and this is Millie, my bestest friend. The, the music. The music. Ah. August nudges Olive. I'm Olive. Mm, smile. That's a nice name. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, on the count of three, we're gonna race to the slide. <gasps> Here we go. Olive is half dragged away by the two girls as Caprice explains the course, holding onto their hand tightly. I'll be back soon. Have fun! <sighs> August glances up as two women approach, watching the three run off. She makes friends everywhere she goes. Ah, oh, Caprice. You should see how she is when she assists on the tours. Every guest pays more attention to her than the aquarium. Mm. That sounds like good business. Mm -hmm. You just noticed the music? I noticed it immediately, yes. <laughs> I instantly recognized it. I was like, oh my goodness. The two greet August with a pair of warm smiles as their small talk winds down. Hi, I'm Caprice's mom. This is Adelaide, my bestest friend. <laughs> nice to meet you. Oh, you too. Too. <laughs> I'm August. Both Olive and August passed the time together with their new friends. Go, go, go! As Olive stumbles over their own feet, Caprice quickly overtakes their lead and continues dashing ahead. <laughs> Around the tree! That's the last one! The two run, tugging a tree and quickly switching back to rush towards Millie. She waves her hands excitedly. Caprice wins! Ayy! Woohoo! <sighs> okay, okay, you win! From the sidelines, the three women watch the children warmly. The sun is starting to dip low in the sky already. So it's just... Well, it's just so nice to see Olive playing with kids their age. Mm. Do you two live nearby? Unfortunately, no. Mm. I had an appointment at the hospital here, so we were just visiting. Oh, the, the one time at the park. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it went well. I don't think it did. Thank you. <laughs> I hope so too. Oof. Olive stands at the end of the park, yelling impromptu rules for the race at Millie and Caprice as they run around now. Well, thank you, both of you, for the conversation. Mm. Seeing Olive like this is kind of bittersweet. I wish it could last longer. But speaking of, we should probably head back. I have a shift tonight. Mm. Oh, good luck. Night shifts must be tough. Well, it's busier, but uh, the clientele is more patient. It was so nice talking mm. to you. Good luck with everything, all right? Mm. You're doing great. You'll both be okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Uh, good luck with everything, too. Mm -hmm. Olive! Olive! Come on in. Let's head back now. Mm -hmm. Coming! A brief moment. See ya, Olive! Mm. Bye! Though sad to see their new friend go, Caprice and Millie continue to play for a while longer. 
when the sun is long past the horizon and the two girls are sleeping soundly in the back of the car, Adelaide's phone rings. She hesitates to pick it up. Do you? No, no, it's okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. No. Uh. Hi. Thank you so much for the raid, but this is the, the worst possible time to raid. This is an awful time to raid. I am so sorry. Hello. Welcome, raiders. Thank you so much for bringing the raid this way, Aiko-san. Thank you so much. Thank you for the raid. I really appreciate it. To anyone who's new here, hello. I'm Liri. I'm a pink-haired cat girl from the UK. I like comfy games. I like puzzle games. But I need to warn you in advance. I'm playing a very emotional game. And this is a, a very emotional moment. And there are content warnings for death and mortality. So please be warned. This is heavy, a heavy moment. This is like a very serious moment. <laughs> so I am so grateful for the raid. Thank you so much for bringing the raid here. But I do need to say as well, if anyone hears the content warnings and cannot deal with heavy emotional topics please don't look at, please don't watch the stream <laughs> please don't watch the stream it's very emotionally heavy it's very dark it's sad sad times but thank you for the raid. Thank you for, for bringing it this way. I hope the GTFO went well. I hope you had fun with your stream. I want to play GTFO again at some point. That game is a lot of fun. But I'm bad at it. But yes. <laughs> yes, heavy emotion. That's... Ready. I'm... If everyone's ready, I will continue. But it's... At least you... At least you raided now and not about 10 seconds later. That may have been even worse. <laughs> but uh, thank you for the raid. Thank you very much. Uh, if topics about death, mortality, uh, specifically cancer, are things that may be triggering to you, please do not watch the stream right now. <laughs> but otherwise, I will continue with the story. But thank you for bringing the raid this way. I hope you rest well, Aiko-san. I hope you have a good night's sleep. Because I know it's late for you. But yes, I... I I don't often play games that are, like, super, super heavy. I do a lot of comfy streams. But this is... This is one of those moments where it's like, it's it's mostly a comfy game. But the emotional moments are very... Very impactful. But they also are so important to the game. Like, the game would not be the same without these kind of moments, these stories. So, yes, that is the warning. I've warned everybody. If you stick around, it's time to cry. <laughs> but thank you for the raid. Okay, here we go. A moment passes before the phone is answered. Adelaide speaks softly, but... The quiet hum of the idle car isn't enough to mask the conversation. Charlie keeps her eyes closed and leans her head back, pretending that she can't hear. Pretending she can't hear the doctor on the other end of the phone, saying things like a rapid progression, hospice care, or end-of-life preparation. Adelaide is doing the same, keeping her voice level, light and murmuring affirmations as naturally as she can. The air in the small space is different. The only connection between the two in this moment, the only thing separating this from any other phone call, are the tears welling up in both their eyes. When Adelaide hangs up the phone, 
She places it in her lap. In a careful movement, she opens the car door. I love you, baby. I love you so much. Mm. Oh, thank you for the headphones. Thank you. Oh. Adelaide brushes some hair out of her face, careful not to wake her. Millie stirs ever so slightly, murmuring sleepily. She closes the door and slumps to the ground. In less than a minute, Charlie is by her side on the ground, hand on her back. I... I, I should... I should call Mike. He... Charlie holds her as Adelaide's shaking hands try to reach for her phone, to speak to her husband who is undoubtedly waiting by his phone at work. Take a minute, Aid. Just... Charlie, what am I gonna do? She can't answer. Adelaide knows that. But she repeats the question as sobs rack her body, and her friend pulls her into a hug. For the first time since the diagnosis, Charlie and Adelaide cry together. Neither has the strength to be the strong one right now, the one who can sit and listen. This is about her. <laughs> this is her. <laughs> she just got that information about herself. <sighs> and time passes as their tears slow. Adelaide manages to pull herself away from Charlie long enough to call Mike. To cry all over again as she fails to repeat the news and hand the phone over to Charlie to tell him where they're parked so he can leave work now. Charlie takes care to roll down the windows and cut the engine to let the kids sleep. She meets Adelaide at the, foot of the, at the front of the car, sitting on the concrete parking stop next to her. Neither are sure what to say, but Adelaide manages to speak first. I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? No! You get this information about yourself and your first thought is to apologize. <laughs> Ada, don't. I'm so, so sorry, Charlie. I don't want to leave you alone. Mm. She's just thinking about everyone else before herself. Aid, please don't. I know. I know you don't. It's not fair. It's not. Charlie swallows the lump in her throat. I know. Millie. Oh, God. Millie. Please, Charlie. Please, take care of Millie for me. I will. I promise. And Mike, he... And yourself, too. I... Adelaide, we... We'll figure something out, okay? We'll look out for each other. Yeah, family. We have time, mm. right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we do. I love you, Adelaide. I really do. I love you so much, Charlie. Thank you for always being here for me. Silence falls again. As Mike's car approaches, screeching to a halt, Adelaide grips Charlie's hand once more in affirmation. Thank you for the headphones. Oh. It isn't fair. But they have time. They'll look out for each other. 
And someday, somehow, they'll be okay. To Mike. Be good to yourself. Please forgive me for leaving you alone. Don't be in any rush to come see me, okay? Millie needs you. I love you. I'd marry you a thousand times over. To Millie. My little darling. I love you so, so much. Watch over your dad for me. I'll watch over you too. I know you're going to grow up into an amazing person. I would do anything to be there. To Charlie. Thank you for everything. You're my closest, bestest friend. You're an amazing mom and Caprice is so lucky to have you. I've been so lucky to have you as a part of my family. Another one's unlocked, huh? Wait, <laughs> yay. Huh, yeah. Yep, there's the content warning. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate. Let me, yeah, I need to replenish the tears I'm losing right now. Uh, <laughs> no, the most inappropriate confetti. I uh, guess this is the ending. Uh, Interestingly enough, for the game, this is the the beginning, almost. It's, it's like a, a prequel towards the events of the game that I've been playing. But yeah, this... Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. What do we have next? End of a chapter. Okay. No content warnings, though. All right, end of a chapter. Perfect circle. Page seven. Things I love about you. Your laugh, your hugs. The way you love me too. I just know you're going to grow up to be an amazing, wonderful person, Millie. This feels so quiet. I'm going to turn it up a bit. how bright you make everyone's days. Page 19. What about me and Caprice? Can we still see oh. each other? Of course you can. Dad will be here. And I'm sure Charlie would love to have you. Woohoo! Yippee! You, I'm going to miss Charlie. And I'm sure she's going to miss me, too. But another thing we have in common is how much we love you. Oh. You can still go on sleepovers, have movie nights, visit the butterfly garden. I don't want to go without you. It wouldn't be the same. I know it wouldn't, sweetie. But Caprice is your best friend, and I want you two to be there for each other. You can still be her friend without <laughs> me there. In fact, I want you to. Please don't push her away, okay? Uh, okay. Oh, I... Mm. Page 31. For when you graduate middle school. Hey! Congratulations! You're so grown up now. She really did it for everything. I hope you have an amazing day. Tell your dad I said you can have as much cookie cake as you like. What if she doesn't like cookie cake anymore? No. It's it's fine. It's the thought that counts. If things change, I'll get the message anyway. Wanna take a break? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. God, it's gotta be so hard. Like thinking about all page the things that she's not going to be there the following for. pages are recipes for brownies chocolate chip cookie cake and of course my one and only deluxe cheesecake bites i used to make these all the time for you and caprice wait wait uh, don't skip it we should make it sometime yes yeah i want to try your mom's brownies again <laughs> 
And you will. I'll make them for us. But I'm keeping the recipes just for myself. <laughs> That's the page 42. What to do if dad gets a new mom? That's not going to happen. Oh, come on, dear. It could. It should. You're gonna let all those good looks go to waste? <laughs> it won't happen. It might. Except it did. So, uh -huh. come on, help me with this one. We can come back to it, okay? No, oh, but they didn't. No, they didn't. I'd rather you take me out on a date tonight oh. anyway. <laughs> I'll call Charlie. Page 52. Mm. What can I do when I miss you? Go for a walk. Count how many dogs you see. Breathe in the air. When you're done, you can come home. Make yourself something to eat. If you're still feeling down, read some of these letters. Yeah. And... Know that I love you, and I miss you too. Page 53. I'm afraid of forgetting you. To be honest, I'm afraid of that too. I think you're going to forget some things though. That's okay. And you know, I've forgotten a few things too. I don't remember which tooth came in first, or when you got your first haircut, or what you wore on your first birthday. But I remember the big things. Like when you were a baby, I used to sing you to sleep. Sometimes we mm. fell asleep on the floor together. Oh. I remember how little you were. I remember your first Christmas. Now you loved all the lights we put up on the tree. I remember when Caprice was born and how you both fell asleep in my arms. So forget some things. Don't feel bad if it happens. It's natural. I just hope you'll always remember the big things, whatever they may be. If you can't remember my voice, I hope you'll remember that I used to say I love you every night before bed. I hope if you don't remember how tall I was, you remember how I used to pick you up and hug you. <laughs> I... I miss her. Hi Ace, welcome back. Welcome to sad grief time, hi. <laughs> Oh, I'm always scared of forgetting more about her. Sorry, I, I just need a few minutes alone. All right. We love you, Millie. Are you going to be okay? They'll be okay. They all will. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Thank you for letting me share part of her with you. I... I think I want to keep the rest to myself for now. We'll be here if you need anything. I know. Oh. Caprice? Yeah? Later. Do you want to go visit her? Together? You mean... Yeah. That'd be nice. And, um, do you think Charlie would want to oh. come with? Oh, she definitely would. I... I think she'd love to. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but they'll be okay. Traced footsteps. I did it. I got all the achievements. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for following their stories. Thank you for sharing their stories. We hope you continue to carry them in your hearts. Don't worry, I will. I will. There's there's no way they're ever leaving my hearts, honestly. There, there is no way I could ever forget anything about this. Uh. So with that, I have gotten all the Steam achievements. 
But uh, I have been told there is extra stuff in the standalone version of Perfect Circle. So uh, guess what I got? Uh, we have small character descriptions in the voice settings of Perfect Circle. Wait, like in here? Echoes of Spring Editor jukebox. Thank you. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna load up the standalone version now because I, I got that too. Yeah, with that um, subtle fade. There we go. Right, hopefully this will work straight away. Because I didn't set it up ahead of time because I'm not a smart person. Oh, oh that's loud. How's that? I think this should be okay volume wise. I can adjust it as needed. I can adjust it on the fly. We can see how it goes. Oh, it's just one short new scene. The end is in sight. Oh, we're so close to. Okay, that is quite loud still. Let's go. I like there. That. that seems like a good background music level ish. But yeah, oh, it's just one, one short new scene. The end is in sight. <laughs> Also, can I just say too, I really love this cursor so much. I really love the cursor. All right, click to begin. Here we go. Okay. View the extras, change your settings, quit the desktop. What are the settings? Oh, here we go. Adelaide, the sweetest, most wonderful person on earth. She's been sort of sick lately, but always finds the strength to hug Millie as tight as she can anyway. Mike, Millie's dad always has snacks ready whenever she gets home from school. He wants to open his own car shop one day and even told Millie he'll teach her he'd teach her all about them if she wants. Millie, oh that's so cute. That is adorable. Millie really really likes reading stories with her mom. She's been acting especially good this year because she plans to ask Santa for a kitten for Christmas. A <gasps> Mr. Mo. <gasps> August. Olive's mom is extremely nice, too nice. She looks tired all the time, but never takes a break. Olive hopes they can help her someday. Olive, oh, beautiful. There's nothing cool to say about Olive. They don't have any friends or anything like that. They just want to stay out of everyone's business and not bother them. I love the cactus, though. Charlie, the coolest mom ever. She gets to hang out at the aquarium all day and knows everything about all of the things that live there. Caprice thinks she worries too much, though. Caprice, oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Caprice loves drawing and otters and drawing otters. Her favorite thing is when mom takes her to work with her because they can look at all the creatures together. Cal. Caprice's grandpa isn't around all the time, but she likes it when he is. Sometimes they go to the park together to draw the ducks on the lake. Ariel. Auntie Ari runs the diner Olive's mom works at. She's funny and smiles a lot, and she tells Olive secrets like how to hide her tips in mom's purse. <laughs> oh, I love that thought. I, I love August being like, oh no, I couldn't. And then Auntie Ari's just like, hey, can you just slip this in your mom's purse? Sneaky, sneaky. Check it out. Cal's hat. <laughs> and Sam. He stinks at coloring. <laughs> nice. All right. All right, so after hours, two halves. The flowers of the flower of February. Oh no, yeah. Uh, raised by the sea. Did I did I read this one? No, I did. Didn't I? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, raised by the sea. I remember page fifty-three. Autumn woes. Unbroken. End of a chapter. 
Perfect circle. Here we go. Perfect circle. The next page is blank. Here we go. Oh. A small hiccup interrupts the nighttime quiet. Caprice glances over to her friend. She's curled up in a blanket like she's giving herself a hug, hiding her face from the world. Caprice looks back up to the ceiling. If she closes her eyes, she can hear her own mom downstairs and soft crying coming from her and Millie's dad. So she doesn't close her eyes. Should I tell her I'm awake? She thinks, stealing a glance at her friend as another small sniffle escapes her. She can't imagine what she's feeling. Her mom died today. Caprice has never dealt with death before, but neither has Millie. She opens her mouth to say something, but what could she possibly say? She feels her chest tighten. On the floor next to Caprice, Millie suppresses the flood threatening to overwhelm her. How could I ever be happy again, she wonders, never before feeling so small and alone. She doesn't understand. It's not fair. That much she and everyone else agrees. She needs her mom. She wasn't ready to let her go. Millie clutches her chest. She understands why it's called a broken heart now. She can feel every pointed shard. It stabs at her with every breath. It's not fair. Hot tears roll down her face sideways, spilling into a pool on her pillow. She's never wanted her mom to come stroke her hair, to tell her everything will be okay, to be there with her more in her entire life. There's movement next to her. She doesn't move. Did she wake up Caprice? She stays perfectly still, listening out for her friend's voice. But there are no words to be said anymore. Instead, Millie chokes up as she feels Caprice shuffle closer and pull her into her arms. Gently at first, but then holding her tighter as Millie cries more and more. Her friend's little arms aren't anything like her mom's. She can't scoop Millie up into her lap or assure her that she's safe. They're the perfect size to remind her that she isn't alone. She won't ever be. The night lasts far too long, but tomorrow arrives as it always does. Mr. Bo! Down, down, and down the stairs, hand in hand. A cat meows as it trails behind, purring. Millie stops at the end of the steps. Caprice gives her hand a supportive squeeze, and the two share a smile. The birds sing, and the weather is beautiful. There is never a good day to grieve, to say goodbye with every passing memory. The day is filled with hope regardless. At least they have each other. <sighs> I did it. I did it. And I only ran an hour over as well. That was pretty decent. Like, if I, if I hadn't rambled for an hour, it would have been like the perfect timing. <laughs> but oh my goodness. This is it. The end of Twofold Tuesdays. The last Twofold Tuesday is drawing to a close. But we'll always have the memories of it. We're gonna be okay. Ah, oh, what a what an incredible game. What an incredible journey to go on. What the, I mm, so good. What a masterpiece. I'm I am so glad I played this game. I am so unbelievably glad that I played this game. 
and stuck with it till the very end. You are so welcome. I'm... Everything about it has just been so wonderful. It's just such a wonderful experience. I am... Oh, I'm so glad I played it. But all things must come to an end. So with that, I am going to... Ah! I'm heading over to here. And we can find someone to send a raid to. I left, I left Wallace in the corner. Goodbye, Wallace. You had your time. <laughs> oh, can I do a silly and relaunch it? Oh, is it going to change? Hold on. Hold on, do I have to go back? Hold on. Give me a second. Dun, dun, dun. Are you going to show up? Walk together. Thank you. Thank you for telling me to relaunch it. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. I'm holding hands. I'm holding hands too. Okay, now it's the end. <laughs> Thank you so much for pointing that out to me. I'm very glad. Also, the name of the remix Tracing Footsteps is called Leaving Footsteps. Oh, that's that's so perfect. That's so beautiful. Oh, I am I am so sad to to say goodbye to the Twofold Tuesdays. I have been having so much fun looking forward to this every week. It has been such a beautiful experience. I am so happy I played this game. I'm so happy. I'm so glad. But yes, I, I have run an hour over my usual stream time, though, and I'm e extremely hungry now because it's dinner time, so... <laughs> so I'm gonna head off and get some food now, but that... I'm, I'm so glad I managed to finish it. I'm... That was so worth it. That was so worth every second. Oh, I'm also glad you were able to catch mostly every stream. You were always here. Like, even when you weren't here, you were still here. Don't worry. But yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Let's let's find a raid target quickly so I can go get some dinner. <laughs> I'm hungry. Who's on? Who's around? There's a few people around. Who should I raid? You know what? I'm going to send the raid. Oh, actually, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna send the raid over to Moog. Moog Draws. Moog is a VTuber who I actually met at uh, Vexpo at the weekend. She was uh, selling her merchandise there and I bought loads of stickers from her. Uh, she's a member of uh, Moe Live, which is the Maids of England um, VTuber branch. And she just went live. So, yeah, I, I think she's actually going to be talking about Vexpo as well. So, yeah, this feels like a good raid target. Let's head, head over to Moog. Let's see how Moog's doing. But yeah, thank you for joining me today. It's been so good. It's been... I'm, I'm so glad I got the chance to play this game. But uh, I'm definitely at the point now where I, I need to go get some food. And also... Um, also, I've been awake since like 5am, so I'm, I'm a little tired as well. <laughs> But it's been so worth it. It's been so good. All right, here is the raid message. If you're subbed, we got the comfy emote. If not, we have hearts. And I'll send you over to Moog. See how the, the Vexpo chat goes. But yeah, this has been such a, such a wonderful experience. I have had such a lovely, lovely time playing this game. I'm so glad I got to... I'm, gl I'm glad I got to stream the whole thing. I'm glad, glad I got to share it with people. Because it really is the kind of thing where it's like sharing an experience. Something that feels so special about it. It's very special. But yes, that is it from me for now. I will be here tomorrow for a collaborative stream with Loxley, who um, I've been meaning to do another collab with for a very long time. We finally arranged something. So tomorrow I'm going to be playing Crypt of the Necrodancer for the first time. And I've, I've done the tutorial, 
it was a mess. It's gonna be chaos, but it'll be fun. Fun chaos, I think. But for now, I gotta go get some dinner. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And until next time, bye-bye.